by Sharp Electronic Corporation. From Sharp Minds come Sharp Products. And by General Motors. Extra time, extra effort, and attention to every detail. GM is committed to excellence. Hello again, everybody. I'm Keith Jackson, and welcome to the 22nd season of Collegiate Football on ABC Television. And I'm sure you must have noticed in our opening a different name, CFA. That's the College Football Association. And it's the result of a U.S. Supreme Court ruling earlier this year setting aside television control by the umbrella organization, the NCAA, as it has held in the past. Thus, you have on ABC this year the CFA. We'll define it more thoroughly for you at halftime when we have more time. But basically, it consists of five conferences, a total of 63 teams, including all the major independents. But the legal machinations all aside, it is still college football is a grand old piece of Americana. And CFA games will be seen on ABC television this fall in the 3.30 to 7 time slot. So check your local listing each week for the games that will be coming along. On September 15, Oklahoma will play Pittsburgh. And on September 29, Notre Dame at Missouri. And coming into Legion Field for the very first time, the Boston College Eagles. Jack Bicknell is the coach, and Jack has had a fine career at BC. You can see the record a year ago was 9-3. Uh, two years ago, it was 8-3-1. and one. So he has guided these Eagles to successive winning seasons and successive bowl games. A quiet greeting for Boston College, but listen to this as the Red Elephants from Alabama make their appearance in the tunnel. Coached by Ray Perkins, second year for Ray. Eight and four last season at his alma mater. An All-American wide receiver under the legendary Paul Bear Bryant. A tough job to succeed a man such as Paul Bryant, but he did it very well with an 8-4 season and comes into 84 with a very optimistic outlook and obviously solid backing from the home hook. And working with us, Redhead from Decatur, the man with a smooth backswing, the former great coach at Arkansas and at Missouri, Coach Frank Royal. Frank, despite the fact that we had at one time in the history of college football sort of accepted opening games as one we don't get terribly wrapped up in, that doesn't exist anymore. Nowadays, opening games are big games, and this one is packed with pressure. Well, there's extreme pressure on Ray Perkins. He's got a tough program. He's got to win football games here. Alabama fans are spoiled, as you know, and he's got an inexperienced quarterback, and any coach will tell you that is disturbing. This morning, we were having breakfast in our hotel where Alabama was staying, and I visited with Ray very, very early, and uh, I told him that this part of the game doesn't get very easy. He just smiled and went on. But what Ray Perkins has got going for him is a lot of good football players, particularly at backfield and two outstanding running backs. Uh, Moore and uh, Good are just tremendous, and they can score a lot of points. And Ray Perkins is a great offensive coach, and uh, they'll do all right. Doug Flutie, of course, is one of the widely heralded candidates for the Heisman Trophy. He's had a remarkable career for a 5-foot-9-inch quarterback. And uh, there's been an awful lot of pressure on uh, Doug Flutie. He admits there is some pressure, but I think he's handling it pretty well. Well, there's a lot of pressure on him, and he knows this is the most important game of his career because he's a bona fide candidate for the Heisman Trophy. And the, most of the people that are voting on this will be watching this game, and he needs to have an outstanding game. I think he's the most exciting football player in America, Keith. You combine his passing skills and his running ability, and he's in a class by himself. He pulls off the most incredible plays in every football game that we've seen him play. It was interesting when the Boston College team came into Legion Field yesterday. None of them have ever been in this old stadium before. Very few of them ever in the state of Alabama. I think one had been here before. But they walked in here and looked around and said, wow, think about it. This great big old stadium playing Alabama on prime time television and the opening game of the season, as Jack Bicknell says, this is what it's all about. College football from Legion Field in Birmingham. The Boston College Eagles and the Alabama Crimson Tide. We'll talk to Don Shula in a moment. As noted, the starting game with Alabama kicking off. Ken Bell will be deep along with Tyrone Taylor. They are a pair of running backs for Boston College. And Terry Sanders hits it and the game is underway. It carries well into the end zone and will not 
be returned. Ken Bell takes it, puts it knee on the ground, and it'll be first down BC at their own 20 with Doug Flutie opening at quarterback. He is 5'9". Troy Stratford out of Linden, New Jersey, 185 pounder at tailback. Jim Brown, the fullback, 235 pounds. Kelvin Martin is a wide receiver. He's a flyer out of Jacksonville, Florida. And Gerard Phelan, who believes every time the football goes in the air, it is his property. He is the split in. And Boston College, under Jack Bicknell, having won their opening game, comes up to the line of scrimmage, and they send the man in motion. That is Phelan going to the top of the picture, and here's your first snap. Moody back to forward on first down, whips it to the sidelines, and it is almost picked off by number 97, Cornelius Bennett, an outside linebacker who had dropped out to cover Gerard Phelan. The offensive front for Boston College and believe it or not, uh, it might be a surprise to some of you in Alabama, at least, and down in this part of the country, Boston College is a bigger team physically than is Alabama. It'll be second down and 10 for the Eagles now. Stratford comes out. They come into the ball game with a tight, a double tight end now. Casparello comes in there, joining uh, Scott Gieselman. So they've got two big tight ends on second down and 10. Again, Flutie is back to throw. Gieselman's a big target for him. He looks. He goes with it. Deep down field pass is incomplete. Intended for Phelan. And it is broken up on the play by Vernon Wilkinson, the right cornerback out of Enterprise, Alabama. Wilkinson makes an outstanding play. He times it perfectly. Phelan has uh, good speed. Wilkinson has to lay off of him a good cushion. The ball is a little bit late. You can see the receiver waiting for the ball. Wilkinson comes up, leaps, and strips him. Just an outstanding play. Flutie last week in the opening game in two and a half quarters, 22 out of 31, 330 yards and four touchdowns. Back into the ball game now comes uh, Ken Bell at the tailback position. They are double wide, third down and 10, and it probably figures pass again. Flutie back, turns the other way. Great protection for Flutie. Looks and looks and looks and looks and finally throws it, and he's got a man wide open, and he missed the fullback, Jim Brown. He had run all the way to the sideline. He found a slot on the sidelines, but he missed his receiver. Gieselman is 6'6", 240. Mark McDonald, a tackle, is 6'4", 270. Steve Trafilo is 6'4", 265 at guard. Jack Bicknell, 255 at center. Mark Bardwell, 255 at guard. Sean Regent, 270 at tackle. As I said, they are a big team. In the punt now, Steve Peach, a reserve quarterback, replacing John Mahalik as the uh, punter. He suffered a knee injury. Mahalik did in spring practice. Gets a pretty good kick out of there. Back is Greg Richardson for Alabama. Takes it at his 25. Stumbles. Comes back. Loses the football. It is covered by Boston College. Boston College recovers the fumble by Richardson at the Alabama 28-yard line. What, what we just saw was Alabama safety man Richardson stumbling, and he kind of lost his concentration on the ball. Watch him as he pivots. If I, so you can see him stumbling right there, and he kind of loses and tries to change the ball from his right hand to his left hand, something that no ball care should ever do when he's in traffic. The ball comes right out, and Boston College has a break. Casparelli, uh, Casparello, I saw, get it right, made the hit that knocked the ball loose. And here is BC with a huge break in the early going of the ball game. 14-25 to go first quarter. From the 28th, Flutie hands inside to the fullback, Jim Brown, to the 25. Picked up three yards over the left side, running in behind Bardwell and Bicknell. Alabama defense is going to have to come and rise to the cage right here. It is a good defense. Han, Jarvis, Soul, the big people, McRae, Bennett, King, Davis, linebackers, and that Bennett and King are as, two, is, as good as anybody you're going to see on the outside. Robinson, Wilkinson, Tripoli, and Cooper, the secondary. And Ray Perkins Field, this is the area of his team that may have improved the most. Second down and seven, Boston College having recovered the fumble. They're sitting now on the Alabama 25. Brown, the lone remaining back in Flutie. Back to throw it, looks down the middle, goes in the corner with it, and overthrows the intended receiver, Gerard Phelan. Phelan is six feet high, 180 pounds, a senior out of Rosemont, Pennsylvania. Phelan caught 10 passes last week, and we saw uh, Boston College play twice last year, and he's very, very talented, likes to fight for the ball, has no fear of getting hurt. Doug Flutie is now 0 for 4 to start the ball game, but Boston College is sitting knocking on the door. Coming up over the hill, an almost full moon here in Birmingham. Third down and seven for BC at the Bama 25. He's 
Eagleman, the tight end, is in motion. He may see the ball this time. He gets rid of it very quickly to Stratford. The tailback, and Stratford breaks it down to the 10, stops out of bounds at the 9. Run out of bounds. Just when he simply ran out of real estate, but he made a fancy step to get away. And watch the pressure here coming on Flutie from Cornelius Bennett. Cup of the safety man is playing man for man on Stratford right there. You see the miss, the missed tackle. Stratford is a very fine runner. One that gives the Boston College another dimension for their offense. Good reception and a fine run for the first down. That's what makes Flutie so dangerous, Frank. He saw Cornelius Bennett coming, just pop at him, knew exactly where his man was going to be to hit him. Ball is inside the 10. They give the ball to the fullback and Brown is stopped short of the line of scrimmage. Cornelius Bennett, number 97, from the top of the picture, popped him. There's Ray Perkins, second year head coach at Alabama, succeeding great. Bear Bryant, I think he's done a great job in handling this pressure, Keith. I talked to him today again. He has developed his own identity, his own team's identity, without harming the legacy of Bear Bryant at all. Steve Strahan, number 33, is in the ball game now at fullback. He is the designated leaper for Boston College. Former track man in high school, high jumper, very quick. Second down. Ball is back at the 12-yard line. Flutie on an option, keeps the ball, turns to the front, goes to the three. They may mark him just outside the three. Vernon Wilkinson, number 38, and Scott McRae, number 45. Inside linebacker in the right corner made the stop. Once again, Alan, Boston College using formations uh, got a little bit out of out of their alignment, left the weakness down the boundary. Flutie went right to it on the option play. Boston College, third down. They cannot get a first down. They've got to put it in the end zone because this possession and this series of plays started inside the pen. Strahan is out. Jim Brown is back in. So it's Brown and Stratford. Set behind Flutie. Third down and goal from the three. Flutie gives to Stratford. Right side, blocking good. Stratford, goal line, touchdown, Boston College. Ball pops loose, but the arms had already gone up from the linesman, PDBC. Good running by Stratford inside. The rule says that if the ball breaks the goal line clean, imaginary line coming up from the goal line, it's an automatic touchdown. Anything that happens after that, is academic. Let's judge and see. He puts the ball outside. If he has possession across the goal line, if he has possession, it's a touchdown. He, I can't tell. Yes, I guess he did have possession. Yes, yes. He was knocked out when his body fell against the turf. Kevin Snow in for the extra point try. Did not have a good year a year ago. Jack McNell said it was his problem because he was using more people. This time he said to Kevin Snow before the season, the job is yours, go do it. Snow has flipped the uprights with 11 minutes and 59 seconds to play in the first quarter. It's Boston College 7, Alabama nothing. Soon over Birmingham. Boston College out in front 7 to nothing. Yesterday I talked with Doug Flutie about the mood of the team for this game. Uh, leading up to last week, we were kind of excited, you know, it's opening game and all, but this week all of a sudden the tempo picked up even more, and there was a big, big pickup in the tempo, so teams really anticipating having a great game. Uh, last week worked well as a tune-up for this one, and we think we got a lot of the little kinks out, the, the problems on special teams, subbing in, subbing out, a lot of the penalties, things of that nature that happen in a first ball game. So we feel that maybe we'll be a little more polished today, or coming into the game, and uh, we're, we think it's going to help us a great deal. Comments of Doug Flutie from a conversation of yesterday. I might remind you that Boston College scored 14 points in the fourth quarter to beat Alabama up at Foxborough in the game where the stadium lights went out on them 20 to 13 a year ago. I might also remind you that back in 1946, one of Alabama's greatest players, Harry Gilmer, had a big day against Boston College, but the Tide still lost to them 13 to 7 on that year. Alabama's only win over Boston College having come in an Orange Bowl game in the past. Boston College is one of the very few teams that hold an edge in series over Alabama. The kickoff by Snow is a high hanger. And Terry Good, the running back, takes it. Great speed, great change of pace. Gets him to the outside. 25, great leg drive. 30, 35, 40, 45. Out of bounds up near midfield. So Alabama starts out 
after their big mistake, giving Boston College a chance to score this touchdown. This is a good cutback by Stratford, the tailback, going inside of containment, fights and sticks the ball with his arm across the goal line plane before the fumble, which is a legitimate play and a good call by the fish. That super slow-mo machine, which was put into use during our coverage of the Summer Olympic Games in Los Angeles, it's first down, Alabama. At their own 49-yard line, they start out with good field position. Mike Shula pitches the ball back to Goose, and Harry Goose, 6 feet, 185, a sophomore from Town Creek, Alabama, makes the hit over the right side. Mike Shula stands 6'2", 200 pounds, a sophomore coming off knee injury. Good, as I told you, from Town Creek and a sophomore and a very good one. Here's the hammer for Alabama. Ricky Moore, six-footer, 235 pounds. The Horstead is in there right now. Greg Richardson is the flanker. His first fumble on a kick return a moment ago. And Joe Smith out of Mobile, he is at the split end, 6'2 and 185 and very fast. It is second down and seven. Ball is sitting on the Boston College 48-yard line. This is Terry Good. First down for the tie as he cuts it back over the left side. And what tremendous blocking he got from the left side of the offensive line for Alabama. So let's take a look at him. Preston Gothard is the tight end. Big fella, 6'4", 215 pounds. Gary Otten, right tackle, 6'6", 260. John McIntosh at guard, 6'1", 240. Wes Neighbors at center, 6'2", 250. Mike White at guard, 6'3", 240. And the other tackle is David Johnson, 6'4", and 270. My goodness, they've been eating a lot of cornbread. <laughs> 10 minutes and 50 seconds to go. Horstead is out now, and Moore is the lone remaining back as Alabama goes in a double-wide set, and uh, Mike Shula back for his first pass, and hits his man at the 35. Terry Good out of the backfield, brought down by Neil Eichen for Boston College. The defensive alignment for B.C. goes like this. Thomas Harrington, Ruth, Mike Ruth, the nose guard, Boza, Gorecki, the big fellas up front, Ed Gaffney and Andy Hemmer are the linebackers. Hemmer is from Ohio, one of the most distant of all the members of the roster. Russell, Eichen, Ferreira, and Thurman, the secondary for B.C. It is second down, a pickup of about four, so it'll be second down and six, just outside the 35 for Alabama. This time, Ricky Moore gets the football. Watch the power of the man as he goes to the 40 and what appears to be a first down. Brought down by John Bosa. Alabama in this series has been using the two tight ends uh, for the first time in many, many years. The strategy in this is to allow them better blocking to contain and control the football with their good running back and let uh, Shula break in in his passing slowly and confidently. The other tight end when they go to the double tight alignment is Thornton Chandler, 6'6", 240, out of Jacksonville, Florida, a junior. Two tight ends just gives a little bit more blocking strength. Takes away the element of blitz somewhat, too, doesn't it? Yes, it does. It's tough to blitz a two tight end offense. Third down, they need inches, and they've got it. A Terry Good turns it down to the 26-yard line. So Good, who has added about 10 pounds from last season, hitting in there with authority. Terry Good, number 35, ran a 78-yard touchdown run against Tennessee last year and started every game after that. He goes out of the game right now as Paul Ott comes in. Paul laid out last year because of a severe knee injury and subsequent surgery. Nine minutes to play in the first quarter. Boston College leading seven to nothing. Alabama having fumbled the punt, which gave BC possession on the Alabama 28. And Mike Ruth makes contact. Mike Ruth and Wes Neighbors, uh, the nose guard for Boston College and the center for Alabama. This has got to be one of the great individual matchups of the season. Mike, anticipating there a little bit too soon, makes contact. He has bench press 530 pounds. So he's strong, but he is also quick. The coaches feel that he's the most dedicated player on their defensive team. Truly uh, has a chance to be All-American. Defense, five yards. Second down. Bobby Aye is the uh, referee for tonight's ball game. James Owens, the umpire. Bert Ackerman, the linesman. Joe Carroll, the line judge. Joe Delaney, the field judge. Joseph Dorenzo is the back judge. It's first down and five for Alabama. The ball is given to Moore. Moore hits him over the right side. Runs into number 50, David Thomas, who led the team in tackles last week. David, 230-pound senior from Capitol Heights, Maryland. And the Goodyear blimp is soaring across in this soft evening in Birmingham at the Enterprise out of Pompano Beach, Florida with Dr. Jim Maloney. Dr. Jim, 
doctorate in electrical engineering at USC. And up there with him, our cameraman, Bill Sullivan, and our video technician, Tony Capitano. They're going to get a nice ride tonight. It's second down and four. Another new formation for Alabama, one that we have not seen in the game. Shoeless pass. Dirk Richardson inside the 15, down to about the 13 and a first down. Mike Shula shows a lot of poise on that particular pass as we look at Jack McNeil, worried about his defense. It seems right now the Alabama offensive line is doing a good job controlling that defense and are moving the ball pretty much at will. Shula has two for two, short passes, something that every coach would do for the quarterback starting his first game. And there's Ray Perkins. Has to be pleased the way the offense is moving the ball right now. They've got another fellow sitting on the bench waiting for his chance, a spectacular freshman from LaGrange, Georgia, named Vince Sutton. The ball is placed down, first down Alabama on the Boston College 14. This is Paul Oxaroos. Inside the five, down to the three. The senior from Summit, Mississippi, running with power. Number 16, Cruz watching. This is a play that he runs to perfection. He starts wide, and then he cuts back. He sees just enough daylight to give him a little room there. The line has done a great job, and he breaks through into the secondary, keeps his feet driving. He said that he's faster after his operation than he was before. Keith, that's a little bit unusual, but he claims that that's the way it is. It's first and goal, Alabama, on the Boston College three. Alabama trying to respond to BC's seven nothing lead. It's Garuth to the right again. Touchdown. College is in tight, expecting to play inside, and you can see the blocking by Ricky Boyd, number 26, as he keeps his feet, knocks the linebacker, Gaffney out of the play, Carruth scores. Van Tiffin, a sophomore out of Red Bay, Alabama, in for the extra point try out of Paul Field, and hits it in his career at Alabama. He's 41 out of 41. They go 51 yards on nine plays, good. Kickoff return, setting them up for the tying touchdown. Football. Coach Barry Fritzer takes a determined Oklahoma spot east to battle the high-powered Pitt Panthers next Saturday live at 3.30 Eastern on ABC. That's actually 51 yards. The ball was returned to the 49 where by Good, who almost broke that kickoff return for the touchdown. But the important element here, I think, for consideration is that Alabama did respond. They stuck it in the end zone after Boston College had grabbed an Alabama mistake and exercised that opportunity. That's a very high kickoff. And here's the return by Tyrone Taylor. Out to the 20, comes to the 21. There were several games played today. There's uh, Miami, the defending national champions, losing their first 22-14 up in Ann Arbor, Michigan, with 106,000 folks watching. Big number there, of course, the six interceptions of Bernie Kosar, the Miami quarterback. And Nebraska rolled over Wyoming today, 42-7, and uh, another great performance by a great Nebraska tailback. This time it's Jeff Smith, Clemson, leading Virginia tonight by a score of 27 to nothing. We run down the other scores as we work our way through this ball game. Jim Lance will have more for you at halftime. Handoff goes to Troy Stratford on the first down play from the 21 for Boston College, and he picks up about three yards before Cornelius Bennett brought him down. Oregon State Beavers out of the Pac-10 gave Ohio State all kinds of trouble today before the Buckeyes finally won the ball game, 22 to 14. As a matter of fact, Oregon State at one time led 14 to three, and Purdue beat Notre Dame 23. 21 as Jim Everett, the Purdue quarterback, had a super day and Notre Dame turned it over five times. On second down and eight, Flutie back, look, good protection, throws in, go, oh, it's caught on the rebound by Phelan. Gerard Phelan takes it to midfield. He went off the hands of one BC player and right into the hands of Gerard Phelan, and I told you a little while ago, every time a football is in the air, Phelan thinks it's his. Here's Flutie looking to the right, finally spotting a receiver to the left, goes right through, and 
right through one of the receiver's hands and Phelan catches it. Last year we saw this happen and as we look at the isolation, Phelan's going to be going deep and hook up. He's not the first target. The ball is thrown to receive in front. The ball is deflected. Phelan catches it and makes the first down. Last year it happened against Penn State for a touchdown, 68 yards. Bradford on first down at the 48 is cut down on a sharp tackle by inside linebacker Wayne Davis for Alabama after Troy picked up a yard. This Alabama defense is very talented. Hands, Jarvis, Sowell, and the two ends, Bennett. Outstanding. Let's look at the deflection That's again. That's Peter Casparello, 85, the tight end out there as your primary receiver here. The ball goes, his hands. goes right through off his hands, and Phelan alertly catches it and makes the first down. Flutie threw it too hard. Peter couldn't handle it. But Phelan got it with the starch taken out of it and turned it into a big play. Flutie quick. Out there. Phelan on the ground. Down. Incomplete pass, they say. Now, I'm not, you know something, Frank? I think Phelan is that sharp. I think that he realized the knee was down, the ball was on his hand, he just dropped it on the ground. Why take the loss? 59-21, Iowa over Iowa State, and that long-running uh, state interstate rivalry in Cross State. Chuck Long, pretty good day. Penn State had a problem with Rutgers. Uh, the folks, including the governor up in New Jersey, say that Rutgers, uh, the state university, is, is going to be made into a strong football team. They look like it. Oklahoma finally got it going and beat the Stanford today, 19-7. Flutie's pass down the middle, pass incomplete on the hands of Scott Gieselman, and then out. Alabama defense are doing an excellent job of keeping Flutie in the pocket. The strategy that they are using is a good inside rush to keep Flutie from seeing those inside receivers in Paris vision, but enough pressure from the outside to contain him. Flutie right now, Frank, is two for eight for 40 yards. Georgia and Alabama are going to play down here in Legion Field in early October. It'll be their first meeting in some time. The front now on fourth down by Boston College, uh, Peach. And this time, Greg Richardson handles it. He calls the fair catch, and it's Alabama's football. First down, just outside their own 20. 5.26 to play in the first quarter. To see Alabama's second possession. Last night, our colleague Tim Brandt talked with Mike Shula about what he expected tonight from the B.C. defense. Boston College is defensively they're real aggressive you know when everyone talks about Boston College the first thing they talk about is Doug Flutie you know and why not he's, he's a tremendous quarterback and but a lot of people don't know much about their defense and they have a tough aggressive defense and they're going to come after us and challenge us and it, it will be a good challenge for our offensive football team. Now it'll be interesting to see Frank Broyles if uh, Alabama tries to do this time what they did the first time they had the ball. And they carried it 51 yards. Two tight ends, good running formation, and it has surprised Boston College, and they haven't made the accurate adjustments yet. Dude come wide to the left. That seems uh, more to pull back up the middle. Good trap blocking gets him across the 25 to the 26. Well, so far, Wes Neighbors and company in the middle have been handling uh, Big Mike Ruth, haven't they? Yes, they have, and the offensive line of Alabama is getting a good surge. They are controlling the line of scrimmage. In fact, Boston College has had Really, no penetration so far in this ball game. That's an exciting game. Yeah, George Perlis, the, the Spartans getting a win by three points over Colorado. Colorado beginning to turn things around after some dry years. On second down and four, this is the fullback Ricky Moore out of Huntsville, Alabama, big senior. And he is just short of the first down by a yard. Let's look into the interior now, down in the trenches where the big boards work. And this is what they're doing to Mike Ruth. Mike Ruth is playing on the center. Neighbors gets a good scramble block. Watch him get a lead block on him, gets him cut off completely, blocks him low, right in his leg, which is probably the, the easiest way to block Ruth because he's so strong in the upper part of his body. It's third down and a yard from the 29 for Alabama, and they go to Goode, and they get him behind the line of scrimmage. This time, they got penetration. Number 95, Chuck Gorecki, was the man that came slashing in and took the legs away from Kerry Goode, stopping him at the line of scrimmage. And look at that score. Brigham Young beating Pittsburgh in the opening game at Pitt. Kick Baylor sideways today, 47-13. Always has a quarterback. Lavelle Edwards always has a quarterback. Lavelle Edwards, one of the great coaches and most underrated coach made in America today. Southern California opening with a big win. Fourth and one, and so Alabama will punt it. Terry Sanders in to punt for the first time tonight. He 
Howard's been doing very well in the pool. Oh, look at that howitzer. Oh boy. Kelvin Martin all the way back at the 20 and is dropped inside the 20. If there is a decisive edge in this ball game, or difference between no, these two teams it. on a plus, it is in the kicking game. Alabama has the edge in the kicking game. That one, 51 yards net. Three minutes and 49 seconds to play in the first quarter, a 7-7 ball game. And Boston College will have the football first down at their own 19. Doug Flutie's percentage of completions has never been impressive uh, because he goes downfield so deep the majority of the time. His pass is Arthur Nicklin down tight. Steve Sohan at fullback, Stratford tailback, Gieselman in motion, double wide. Flutie pitches the ball to Stratford, looks for some daylight. There just isn't any. Good movement by the Alabama defense. John Hand, number 78, is 6'7", 280 pounds. And the coaches feel he's going to be really a dominant football player before he leaves the university. There's Doug Flutie, number 22. A little slow start for him, but you cannot hurt his confidence. He's still a gambler, unorthodox. Improvises better than any quarterback I've seen in many, many years. Brendan Murphy is in at tight end, replacing Scott Gieselman now. It's second down and seven. And this is Stratford carrying the ball across the 30 and gets out to about the 35 before they finally throw him out of bounds. Mark it on the 34, and that's a BC first down. Good call at the line of scrimmage by Flutie because Alabama had moved into a blitz inside, and uh, they, Flutie changed the play outside, catching the defense as well. You can see there's very few people lined up outside, and the blocking coming around with... Uh, Number 54 reaches the weak side tackle, leading the play. Stratford makes a nice game very easy. The hole was made by the alignment of the defense. So the Eagles now with a little room. Gieselman back in at tight end. Goes in motion. Flutie takes the handoff. Keeps it. Shoots it. And it bounces in front of the attempted receiver, Kelvin Martin. Two fifty-nine to go next Saturday, three thirty to seven Eastern Time. Oklahoma and Pittsburgh. Pitt was beaten by BYU in the opener. Oklahoma beat Stanford today, nineteen to seven, going back to the wishbone offense. And the Oklahoma quarterback today uh, had hundred and eight yards. Uh, Bradley he carried the ball thirty times. Well, that, he must be happy. Huh? That's the style of Oklahoma that won so many games in the seventies. Casparella in motion. And Flutie, the ball And recovered by Alabama. Kurt Jarvis covers the football. Alabama blitzed him and got him. Keith, the, the rule says for the quarterback, if he has intentional forward movement of his hand, it is an incomplete pass regardless of where the ball goes. It seemed to me that Flutie had his hand up and had started the pass forward. Let's see if we can tell. It's Randy Rockwell coming in to hit him. No, he was cocking it. He was cocking it. He had never started the hand forward, so it was a good call. Blitz caught him from the blind side. And Alabama sits on the Boston College 25 with the football first down. And the handoff goes to Boone. And Taylor Boone still running, still going. It's touchdown! Taken the lead in the ball game, 13 to seven, on the 25-yard run by Kerry Good. Extra point is good by Van Tippen. Alabama with two minutes and 45 seconds to play in the first quarter. And I would think that now the Boston College Eagles have got to pull the chin straps a little tighter because Alabama made this one look pretty easy. 
good number 35 very talented his coaches say he's the hardest worker maybe they've ever had as a tailback he's dedicated and he is very much respected by the team because he never talks all he does is work now let's watch it from the end zone we're going to see a block on Pereira, the number 41 the safety man coming up right here you can see good cuts back now he sidestepped Thurman number 17 goes right in for the touchdown good run by good just Sanders to kick it off Bell and Taylor deep this is Bell two yards deep in the end zone and he's coming the wedge breaks down he takes a whack at the 18 and goes down at the 19 let's go back and look at the touchdown again you're going to see David the block by Johnson number 60 and Richardson number 17 you can see Richardson the wide flanker making the key block and then 60 the weak side tackle Johnson keeping his feet moving and blocking Pierre out just enough for good to go in for the touchdown ball is short of the 20 yard line first down Boston College 14 7 Alabama They've contained Flutie pretty well so far. And off his in time. Steve Strahan carries to about the 22. Now Boston College is running up in two tight ends to try to slow down the blitz a little bit that Alabama has been so successful with. The blitz is a relatively new thing in the Alabama defensive scheme of things because uh, historically uh, and, and last year they did not do it much. They didn't have the experience in the secondary. The coaches felt that if they blitzed up front with an inexperienced secondary, they would get burned. This year, they have confidence in the secondary. Here's the blitz again. Jim Brown, the long remaining back, Flutie back, pressures on. They've got him back at the 10. Emmanuel King, number 92, from the top of the picture. Emmanuel King, number 92, all Southeastern Conference, 11 sacks last year. Very dominant football player. 6'4. 215, you can see how he closed the flute as soon as he saw that he was unblocked and tackled in for a big, big loss. Ball goes from what? 22 all the way back to the 10. Keith, what is uh, really impressive about Alabama, they're getting men clean in the secondary. I mean, through the line block. This is Stratford carrying out to the 16. They're confusing the blocking of the Boston College offensive lineman coming clean and really harassing Flutie. Peach will come in now. Steve Peach has punted twice. 45 and 30 yards. Alabama should get good field position if Richardson handles the punt well. Peach quarterback recruited by Jack Bicknell went to Syracuse and came back to D.C. Gets his punt out of there. It's a good kick. And Richardson back at his 37. This puts his head down and runs right on into that uh, squadron of white-shirted folk, and uh, they put him on the ground at the 47 of Alabama. 46-yard punt by Steve Peach coming up on ABC's NFL Monday Night Football presentation. The Washington Redskins and the San Francisco 49ers at 9 Eastern time. Two of the most prolific offensive football teams in the NFL. Redskins took their lumps in the opener. San Francisco, a resurgent team, many people think this year. Joe Gibbs and Bill Walsh, Walsh to the great coaches. First down Alabama at their own 47 with Paul Ott Carruth and Ricky Moore. The set back, and that's Carruth in motion. Mike Shula gives it to Moore, and Moore puts it on the B.C. side of the field at the 49, pick up four yards. Ricky Moore, 235-pound fullback, has had six consecutive 100-yard games in Alabama. That's a record. He also has been the leading rusher for Alabama for three years. Something else that's a record for Alabama is that ball carrying. Winding down toward the final seconds of the first quarter. Second down, long six. Shula gives it to the roof. The roof breaks the first contact and runs for a first down at the Boston College 40. Tony Thurman finally brought him down as the first quarter comes to a close. Alabama 14, Boston College 7. We'll open the second period of play with Alabama sitting on the B.C. side of the field, first down at the Boston College Court. The 
weather, beautiful evening. At game time, it was 75 degrees, very slight wind out of the southeast, and only 47% humidity. Yeah, you, I don't know how in the world you get any better weather for a football game. And here we go to the second quarter, just short of the 40. On the B.C. side of the field, Alabama's football, and Paul Octeruth runs down to the Boston, near the Boston College, 37, where it'll be second down at about 7. A 14 to 7 Alabama lead, and the numbers for that first quarter show this way. You can see that Alabama dominated even more so probably than these statistics show. Alabama offensive line and defensive line have controlled every phase of the game. Boston College has got to do something to get their blocking on pass protection straightened out. It's been just terrible. Almost had some contact in the middle. Shoeless pass, whip, penalty flag is thrown by the linesman. The pass was incomplete, intended for Preston Gothard, the tight end. And let's see about the penalty. Mike Ruth, the nose guard, was a little bit offside. Just couldn't wait to get some pressure. He's being blocked, and that's a common reaction when you're a great football player. You're getting blocked, Keith. You have a tendency to want to get the jump a little bit on the snap count, and Ruth left a little bit early. Gave Alabama a good field position. You can see him move just a little bit. Shula is probably doing a good job of mixing up the snap count, changing from a quick count to a delayed count. This keeps the defensive lineman off balance and not know exactly when they should make this call. I imagine Wes Neighbors is always happy to look up and see Ruth off balance. <laughs> that's, that's a good matchup. But Alabama has been very, very impressive. Their line is blocked extremely well. Second down and about two and a half from the Boston College 32. Inside handoff and the fullback Ricky Moore punching for the first down. And uh, he's not quite there, I don't think. He's close to it. Harrington makes the stop for Boston College. Let's have a look at him doing his thing. Number 52 is Harrington, the left tackle, was a linebacker at one time, some nose guard. Good quickness, good competitor. Coaches say that he plays every play as if it's a Super Bowl. You can see him take home the pull of guard, the blocker, uh, McIntosh, whips the block, and comes back and makes the play. Scott is a 260-pound senior out of Westwood, Mass. And they're just short of the first down. Third down and about six, seven inches. Watch out for the touchdown play coming up here. They go for the ball. Shula kept it and is able to punch across just over the 30 and should have the first down, though uh, he took a pretty good lick once he had crossed the line of scrimmage. Andy Himmer stepped in, sophomore linebacker out of Cincinnati. In discussing Mike Shula with his coaches, the, the charge of a quarterback is get his team in the end zone, and Mike Shula has been very effective in practice uh, using his teammate, using the weapons that he has, and getting the team in the end zone. That's the mark of a good quarterback. First down, Alabama. Boston College, third. Eagles defense jumping around, a little delay, giving the call out to Ruth, and the senior picks his way. And reaches the 22 of Boston College for eight yards. Boston College anticipated jumping their defense around and confusing the Alabama offensive line. It has three sophomores in the starting lineup, but those three sophomores played a lot, Keith, last year. They are experienced players, talented, and are doing an excellent job of picking up all of the stunts for Boston College. <laughs> to block when you're dancing on your toes, too. <laughs> There's another semi-delay play with Baruth carrying, and this time Paul can't get a thing out of it as Andy Hemmer came slashing in from his right side linebacker position. Matter of fact, he lost on that play. Alabama's rushing so far in the ball game. Good with 50 yards, Moore with 22, and Carruth with 26. And of course, we all remember the days when Paul Bryant used to send six and sometimes eight backs out there, and everybody would get 25 or 30, 40 yards. Ricky Moore was, a, yes, he could kick, carry, pick up on that. Ricky Moore gained 325 yards and was a leading rusher that year at 325 yards. Shula rolling out, keeps it, dives inside the 20. Down close to the 17, and he will have an Alabama first down. Shula was very decisive on that play. Receivers were covered on the rollout. 
He saw that he could make the first down, and that's what his goal was. He cut up field. You can see the motion, the fake. Now the rollout in behind Moore. He's outside of containment. Now he can run or throw the ball. The sure thing to do is run and make the first down. Good effort. See Ricky Moore cut down John Boza. Big tackle. He just took his legs right out from under him. Ricky Moore is a great football player. 18-yard line, Boston College. First down, Alabama. Shula back. And a man, two, touchdown. Number 47 is the safety man inside. He cannot get there. You can see how wide open good was. 40, I guess it was 43. Uh, Eisen, the, the cornerback. The thing of a quarterback, find the open receiver, know the defense, get all the advanced knowledge you can. Van Tiffin's extra point is good. With 11 minutes and 17 seconds to play in the first half, it is now Alabama 21, Boston College 7. Tiffin is 43 out of 43 in extra points. Again, Alabama makes it uh, pretty good. Jack McNell yesterday had this comment about how much room he gives his quarterback. Give him a lot of rope because uh, Doug, Doug knows that uh, we have a lot of checks that uh, he can utilize. And, uh, and also, when things break down, he's on his own. He's at his best. And then when he starts scrambling around, instead of me being down, I'm excited because something's good going to happen. At least it has in the past, and I hope it continues. It's time. This is the critical possession if, of Doug Flutie's senior year, I would think, coming up. They need to correct their mistakes on pass protection, give him a chance. Sanders kicks it very high. That's Ken Bell, a tailback. Well, he runs out of some trouble. They had him pinned up pretty well back on the 10, but he wiggled out of it and got back close to the 20. Again, I say to you, uh, Alabama has a decided edge in the kicking game, and so far their kick coverage has been outstanding, and that young man right there, sophomore Mike Shula, has been outstanding. Now, the, the numbers are not impressive, but that's not, that matters not. Even though he threw for a touchdown, he has run the team with such confidence. But now it's up to Doug Flutie to get something going for the Eagles. Flutie is two out of nine for 40 yards, and he's minus three in the running department. And this ball off to Troy uh, Stoddard, and we've got a penalty flag thrown as Bradford carried the ball, and we might have a face mask. Winning the battle of first downs is so important in a game like this against Flutie because Flutie thro throws the ball 50% of the time uh, on the initial down of a series. So you've got to be, be alert and be ready to, to have your defense uh, taught to make the play. They, I am sure, uh, uh, kind of figured uh, that Alabama was going to do what it's done. That's try to keep him inside. That's an inadvertent face mask, five-yard penalty. Here's Bobby I.A. Unintentional face mask, five yards. But so far, uh, the running game led by Stratford uh, hasn't really been able to open it up. Those are key baseball scores for today. Minnesota beating Texas, Seattle, Kansas City playing tonight, and California was a winner over Chicago today, 6-5. to five. The Angels have come back after suffering through some doldrums a couple of weeks ago. First down at about three. Flutie's pass is away, caught by Gerard Phelan. Phelan's across for the 42. First down, Eagles timing on this play was outstanding. Flutie didn't take the three steps drop, knowing that he had to get the ball out. Phelan is so adept at running pass routes. The toughest place to cover on any football field is right at the boundary. And you can see that Flutie gets the ball there in time for Phelan to turn inside and make additional yardage. Time taken for just a moment as Vernon Wilkinson, the right cornerback, number 38, a sophomore out of Enterprise, Alabama, shake it up as he made the tackle. Doug Flutie is now past 7,500 yards in his passing career at Boston College, 75-09. They're looking at the right leg of Vernon Wilkinson. If they lose him, it's bad news for Alabama. 
game, All-Pro Joe Theismann and the Washington Redskins tackle the dangerous Joe Montana and the San Francisco 49ers on ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. Vernon Wilkinson walking off the field now. He's all right. Jack Bicknell's football team owns it first down at their own 42. Bad news for the Eagles. They trail by 14 points, 21 to 7. For Ray Perkins, Alabama Crimson Tide. He was tight as a drum this morning at the breakfast table. <laughs> Every smile that he had was forced. He was up early, too. He had breakfast at 7. Flutie gives the football off to Stratford again, and Troy gets a couple of yards, and that'll do it. They're trying to buy a little better protection here with their running game. Cornelius Bennett and company right now doing a tap dance on the B.C. offense. 97, Cornelius Bennett can be another Lawrence Taylor, All-American football player. He was the fastest player on the freshman team last year, ran a 4-4, 40-yard day. Second down and eight from the 43. Brody. Quickly down the middle, pass is incomplete. Intended for his tight end, uh, Scott Gieselman and Cornelius Bennett, that outside linebacker making the drop, broke up the play. That was a perfect illustration of how the defense, Flutie, the two inside men, stayed right in their passing lanes, and Flutie could not see over them. He made a bad throw trying to guess where Gieselman was. Two men in the middle are doing a great job of steady, relentless pressure. Well, when they're six foot four and five, and he's five foot nine, Makes a difference. Little deeper drop this time. Now steps up into the pocket, gets it off to the sidelines, throws to Gerard Phelan, and Phelan makes the catch at the Alabama 42 for a first down. Or he's a dandy. Right now, let's check in with our colleague Tim Brandt on the field. Thanks, Keith. I just talked to Vernon Wilkinson, the man, the cornerback who came out here of Alabama. He was injured a second ago. His knee is okay. He will return to the ball game. Also, I talked to Mike Shula. He's going to take a rest now, and the freshman, Vince Sutton, will come in in the next offensive series for Alabama. He's the heralded freshman quarterback from LaGrange, Georgia, we mentioned earlier. A little bigger and a little stronger, perhaps, than Mike, but he has not grown up in quite the same football atmosphere, and he's also a freshman, whereas Shula is a sophomore. Cody gets it away, and ball is dropped right in the numbers of Brandon Murphy, and Murphy just simply let it flop out. Well, that's a tough break for Boston College. You need to get some points on the scoreboard. Murphy was in and behind the linebackers, wide open. It's kind of a throwback pattern where the linebackers move towards the quarterback. Flutie has the arm to drill it. Watch out. It's a simple pass. Right on the numbers. He tried to cradle it in, took his eyes off of it, and it goes incomplete. Well, they'd have been down inside the 20-yard line, first down. Sean Dombrowski is in now replacing Phelan. Second down and 10 from D.C., just short of the Alabama. 42. They've got Stratford in motion. Gives some trips at the top of the picture. Flutie's pass is away. Good. Caught by Dombrowski on the, on the bounce. It hit him on the shoulder pad. Bounced away and he cradled it back in. And gives Boston College a first down at the Alabama 24. As we said earlier, Flutie throws the ball downfield. It's not a nickel and dime type passing attack. Flutie had the blitz. He had to face the blitz. He got rid of the ball while he was falling backwards. Watch the five men coming right from the side. As he's retreating very deep, he plants that foot, drills it right on the numbers. Ambrosky juggles it, but holds on to it for the first down. John is a sophomore out of Erie, Pennsylvania. Eagles now with Phelan uh, back in at wide receiver. No Gieson in down, and they've got a mix-up, and they've got to spend the... Nope, they get a penalty flag before Flutie could call the timeout. He started walking away and was looking to call timeout. And by that time, the laundry was on the grass. Flutie was having trouble jumping his offensive men around from one position to the other, trying to confuse the Alabama pass coverage. And it confused his own team more than it did Alabama. That's a five-yard penalty for illegal procedure. The difference in the Flutie style of play than the average passer, Flutie throws very few delayed passes. Dead ball foul. Illegal procedure. Offense. First down. First and 15. The 
the, the Boston College team is still having difficulty lining up. As you can see, they're jumping around, but they're confusing themselves maybe as much as they are Alabama. Booty back. Quickly away. Pass is caught. Got a man in the open is Troy Spetford. And he's back down near the 21. Scott McRae, the tackle for Alabama. A senior out of Huntsville. Clemson rolling against Virginia. That's a pretty good football team over there in Death Valley. Still on probation, though. You won't see much of them. Fourth quarter, Indiana and Duke even. It's second down and seven now. Flutie is six out of 15 for 95 yards. Stratton, touch it well. 15, 12, first down. What happens on a situation like this, the Alabama football team gets so concentrating on Flutie, they forget the run, Chief. And I've done that with teams, and it just happens. You, Flutie makes a couple of good passes. You say, let's get Flutie. And you start rushing, and look at the hole. The blocking hand, number 78, misses a tackle, grabbed the leg at Stratford, couldn't hold. Stratford protects the ball like a good back and makes the first down. Double tight end alignment now for Boston College. They got three tight ends in the game. Flutie hands it off. The play goes straight ahead with a fullback, Brown, carrying. And Jim Brown, a 235 pounder from Pontiac, Michigan, punches his way inside the 10. Whatever Alabama was doing on the rush to break clean on the uh, throws Flutie for losses, Boston College seems to have picked it up, Keith, and have made the adjustments which they had to do on the bench. Second down to about seven. Ball just inside the nine, but Strahan in a fullback. Looted to Stratford. And Troy is grabbed by number 58, Wayne Davis, and ridden down at about the six. Six minutes and 50 seconds. Play in the first half, 21 to seven, Alabama. One thing that Boston College does with their calling the plays because of their jumping the offense around. The wide receiver brings in the play, Keith, and Dick Nell signals the formation to speed things up. Ball is on the five of Alabama, where it is third down and three. Moody keeps it. Trying to run it, gets to the corner, then throws into the end zone, incomplete. Number 92, Emmanuel King, was not about to let him get around the corner, and he had the leg speed and foot quickness to keep him from getting out there. Meantime, a look here at the intended receiver, Kelvin Martin. Kelvin Martin's trying to get in the back of the end zone. Number 38, Wilkerson, is covering him. You can see he's open, but Flutie couldn't get the ball to him on time. Now Flutie is scrambling all this time, and the ball is low, and uh, he couldn't hold on to it. Fourth down. Fourth down and three. They're going for the touchdown. Or the first down. Sustaining the field goal. Flutie back to throw it. Pretty good protection. Now he's got a scramble trouble. Now he's got a problem. Look at this. He gets away. Now gets it off and it is caught for a touchdown. I still don't know who it was who caught it. Might have been Strahan. His teammates have mobbed tremendous play on the part of Flutie. It was Steve Strahan, the fullback, who realized that his quarterback was in serious trouble, and Flutie, with a marvelous scrambling ability, gets away from two Alabama people and finally produces the touchdown. Incredible play, incredible play. This young man does it every ball game. Look at his awareness. He knows exactly how to get away from those big linemen. Finally comes over and throws the ball to Strahan, his, his tailback for the touchdown. That Let's is his 45th touchdown pass and puts him alone in the record books for having produced touchdowns through the air for Boston College during his career. Watch his quick, watch his awareness. The, the combination of the two make him such a sensational player. He starts back, he sees he can't go anywhere. Now he comes back. And his awareness right here is what is outstanding. He just lobs the ball in to where Strahan couldn't miss it. 13 plays, 80 yards, and Boston College now. 
has the look of making this a football game after all 21 to 13 snow trying to make it 14 and all that happened mind you on fourth down and three the kick is up and it is good so we've got six minutes and three seconds to play in the first half and it's now a 21 14 Alabama lead the Enterprise the Goodyear blimp that picture out of the delicate hands of Billy Sullivan floating around up in the sky just absolutely gorgeous here in Birmingham 603 to go now and Strahan making the catch Doug Flutie ran about 40 yards before he completed that five yard pass on fourth down for the touchdown that's Terry Good for Alabama Whoa, look out if he'd have cut it left it might have been so long instead he cut it right and Boston College brought him down have a look Terry Good is such an exciting football player. He runs a 4-4-40. He has the best lateral movement of any young player I've seen in a long time. He can just cut right on a dime, go down the boundary, cut back, do anything it takes. Mike Shula comes out at quarterback. We had been told by Tim Brad, as Tim had been informed, that Ben Sutton was going to get an appearance. But nope. Now it's a seven-point ball game, so they keep in the starter, Shula. Alabama starting from its 35 on first down. Give it to Good and Good gets a yard. Second down nine. Now Boston College kind of had their dauber down when they took the field the last time that mm -hmm. offensive possession. As we look at Doug Flutie, what a great performance that was in that last possession. There are his numbers, career numbers. No, numbers last year. Yes, 83, 2,700 yards. But that was therapeutic right there for that football team, that drive. With all that scrambling and producing on a fourth down play was impressive. Second down and nine. Shula pitches inside the Utah pass. And it goes to Ricky Moore. And the power of Moore is evident there. They were wrestling with him short of the line of scrimmage. But he came back and picked up a yard or so. The most dedicated defensive player, Mike Ruth, number 68. Coach, he's strong, strong. Watch him use his hand. All those going right through the double team block. McIntosh 62, neighbors 50, uh, 62, trying to block him. He could, they couldn't do it. He splits the block and goes and makes the play. That was a pass, a little shovel pass. What we call the Utah Lee Grosskopf used to work that for Jack Curtis. Just the name Utah pass. Third down and eight. Shula is caught behind the line of scrimmage and brought down by Mike Ruth. So Ruth now beginning to assert himself a little bit. But I'm afraid he was offside, or somebody was offside at least. Ruth it just won't stay back. He's too anxious to put some... Looked like he got back, didn't it, Keith? Yeah, there it goes the pass rush. You can see how dedicated and tough he is. Relentless, going to find a way some way. McIntosh and Arden, number 70, blocking on him. That gives Alabama a much better chance for the first down. Third in about two and a half rather than eight. I don't I didn't see Ruth uh, encroaching at all. No, it must have been somebody on the other side of the line also. One official called it and the other did. Offside, defense, third down. Time remaining first half, seven point difference in the game now. Looked like Alabama was going to really twist some of the tail feathers out of the Eagles, but they came back on that last possession. Mike Schuler throws to the sidelines. Good to Ricky Moore. Moore's got a first down as he is knocked down out around midfield. Timing absolutely perfect on the pattern. Oklahoma and fit. Coach Fazio and folks trying to get their act together after an opening loss against BYU and Oklahoma. With Danny Bradley having a big day today, finally edging Stanford 19 to 7. 7-7 ball game for quite a while. Oklahoma back in the wishbone. Shula now is 5-5, five 37 yards and a touchdown. Alabama first down, ball at midfield, going to throw it again. Whips it over here, passes right on the money to Terry Good. Good makes things happen as he goes to the 40, just short of the first down. Terry Good has worked hard to gain some weight, strengthen his body. He's gained about 15 pounds since his freshman year. 
Shula's looking downfield, receiver covered. He drills the ball right out to Goode. The impressive thing is Goode has time to start using his running ability. You can see how strong it took two men, three, four men, to get him on the ground. Watch him go right through the safety man's arms right here, number 41, Piero. Right there, he could have been tackled for no gain. There he keeps those legs moving, pulls free, keeps his balance, runs over and through some more Boston College defenders. It'll be second down at about a half a yard, and Alabama has taken a timeout with three minutes and 27 seconds to play in the first half, and the Tide leading the Eagles 21 to 14. You have to draw the... Yesterday, when Boston College came out for a little workout at Legion Field, Coach Jack McNell looked up and found he was missing three people. <laughs> Doug Flutie and Gerard Fail and, and, and Kelvin Martin. Uh, you know, they're three quality players, and they're in there playing uh, chess. They had a chess game going, and they missed the time. And I guarantee you, they won't miss it tomorrow, because I'm not leaving until they're right. <laughs> 22 is going to be sitting right beside me, because I'm not going to come to the game without them. His wisdom is obvious. It is Alabama now, second down, a half yard, just short of the 40 on the B.C. side of the field. Uh-oh, looking for a big play. Shula under some pressure. Goes deep with it. Richardson gets yeah. away by number 17, Tony Thurman for Boston College. I want to tell you, that was a great play by Thurman. He was covering over on the boundary. He sees that Shula's going to throw in the middle, and he releases from his coverage as Shula gets away from the rush and throws the ball. You'll see Thurman leave and come back over and jump and knock the ball away. Third down and a half yard now. Alabama is four out of five on third down conversion. Good gets the first. Oh my goodness, if he'd have kept his footing, he might have run for a while. Alabama offensive line are outstanding. Have to just give them credit for the easy way that they're moving the ball. Johnson, White, Neighbor, McIntosh. Jim Lampley and Beano Cook with some highlights of the other games. We'll have the Alabama band, the million dollar band performing. We'll be talking with both coaches, and we will further define the CFA for you is just exactly what that organization is. In a season of uh, somewhat um, muddled circumstances beyond the playing field in college football. Mike Shula shoots that little swing pass out there to Ricky Moore. And Moore is inside the 25 to the 22. Can you believe a man who weighs 235 pounds, six feet tall, has such good hands and has that explosive quickness? Watch him after he catches the ball. Keith, he looks like a 180-pound halfback, turning it into a high gear. Receivers downfield are covered. Here's more. Watch him right here. Watch him explode. Going right through there. Use a little hips and runs right over the defensive halfback. Vincent Munn, sophomore, took that hit from Moore. First down inside the 23. Ball goes inside with good down close to the 20. Two minutes and 15 seconds to play in the first half. Boston College scored first to lead 7-0. Alabama came right back. Big uh, kickoff return. Took it 51 yards for the tying touchdown. Then ran out to a 21-7 lead. And then Boston College came back to make it 21-14. That's where we are. Second down at about eight. Into the middle, Richardson. A little bit behind him. Alabama are jumping their receivers around, trying to confuse the man-for-man -man coverage of Boston College. I, I'm very impressed with uh, Shula's uh, awareness. He has not made any mental mistakes. A young sophomore going into the ball game had 11 snaps before his start tonight, seven out of nine, but he's using his players to their best abilities. That's what he has to do. Third down and eight. Boston College trying to blitz. They pick it up. Off is in the corner. Richardson can't hold it. That was a catchable ball. 
But Greg just couldn't get a handle on it. Todd Russell was trailing on the play. You can see Richardson. The receiver goes in motion. Now he's going to fake inside, and he has a slight advantage on uh, Russell, number 45, about a step and a half, and the ball has to be thrown over his shoulder. Richardson couldn't quite hold on to it. It would have been a sensational catch. Van Tiffin is in the ball game now to try a 37-yard field goal. He has the leg. He has kicked the 51-yarder. He was 14 out of 25 last year in three-pointers. Paul Fields, quarterback, will hold it. Van Tiffin from Red Bay is a sophomore. A lot of leg. And good. 132 to play in the first half. 24-14, 10 point Alabama lead. And let us spend a moment on Chestnut Hill and a look at BC. It comes back to a 10 point lead after we have had a look at Boston College. <laughs> what in the world is that? <laughs> They used to be known as the Red Elephants. I don't think that uh, they use that much anymore with Alabama. Well, I, I do. I, of course, I'm, I go way back. I'm an older fellow, you know, oh. like, like you. <laughs> <laughs> but it's sort of become popular again. It's hard to have a mascot when you're called the Crimson Tide. It's hard to get that ocean in. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the kickoff by Sanders. Oh, he nailed it. And Bell, oh, don't do it. Don't do it. He stopped just a toenail short of the goal line. If he had stepped on that goal line, he'd have had to come with it. And Boston College would have been sitting way back there. But instead, he put it down, and they get it at the 20. Well, here's some excitement. Flutie, in my judgment, will come right out and try to score in this minute and 32 seconds. He's capable. He's very capable. I would think Alabama might play some center field here, though, don't you think? Yes, and, uh, and Boston College has three timeouts left, a minute and 32 seconds to play. Trailing by 10 points. A little confidence from the touchdown drive on the last possession. Doug is 7 out of 17 for 100 yards in the first half of the ball game. And a touchdown. Whoa. Nothing in that play for Torres Stratford as Kurt Jarvis, number 95, the nose guard, just took over. Jarvis played a lot of football as a freshman last year. He weighs 265 pounds. Alabama are covering both of their guards with hands and uh, Jarvis and getting good penetration. I don't know who that is. I can't see. My sh uh, shoulder weighted down by ice. Booty on the run after the five-yard loss. Hooks it back across to Stratford. And Troy is knocked down at the 20. So they're just about back to the original line of scrimmage. That was a little bit dangerous on Flutie's part. He was running to his right, threw the ball over his shoulder into the hands of Stratford, but it could have been easily been intercepted. There's a crowd of people, most of them in red shirts, around the, where the pass was going. Eagles have called a timeout for some conversation with 103 to play in the first half. Well, we've seen Boston College. Let's have a look at Alabama. So they're going to play uh, one of their big games this season at home on the campus. Uh, Penn State game is going to be played in Tuscaloosa. All right, it's third down at about nine for Boston College. With a minute and three to play in the first half. Rudy runs away from the pressure. Want to run it. Can't get to the sidelines. Fumbles the football out of bounds. And Boston College will keep possession. And they've got a first down. Up across the 30, John Hand, number 78, the man that made the hit. Excellent design play. Watch number 24 at the bottom. Watch him block containment. The man in motion, the halfback, coming inside, blocks the containment and allows Flutie to get outside and pick up the first down. A very unusual play, Keith. Something that I don't think that I've seen very much of in the last few years, at least. Well, you don't want him outside. No, sir. He's dangerous. Near the 32. First down for the Eagles. 53 seconds to play in the first half. Flutie uh, looking, gets his pass off, and it bounces in front of Kelvin Martin. Martin had curled it back and was available, but the pass was a little short. Keith, one of the things I hear from fans all the time 
why do teams go into a victory defense right before the half if the other defense has normal defense been playing good but Alabama has not gone in if you look at the replay the ball is underthrown uh, by about two yards Alabama is staying in their regular defense they're not putting a safety man 30 or 40 yards down the field they're staying in their basic defense that they've had success with during the entire ball game something that you rarely see in college today Rudy on second and ten gets his pass away and it is incomplete it was not on target intended for Joe Gianquinto and uh, Britton Cooper was the only man to get a hand on it Flutie wanted to scramble and get outside as we look at his numbers eight for 20 107 yards but he couldn't get outside and he had to throw over some linemen's head uh, offensive linemen and defensive linemen's heads it is third and ten 42 seconds to play first half. This time, he drills Martin on the numbers. Kelvin turns it loose, coming down. The pass is incomplete, fourth and ten. That would have been a first down, obviously. Good throw by Flutie. Protects him. Watch 78 spin. Try to get some pressure, but Flutie has a wide alley to throw the ball, and uh, Martin could not hold on to it. It went right through his hands and incomplete. Alabama's going to try to block the kick. Steve Peach is back there looking at 10 crimson shirts. But there is no penetration on him, and Greg Richardson waits for it at the 27. And comes back to about the 36. So Alabama gets the ball with 25 seconds to play in the first half after that 42-yard punt by Peach. I would anticipate Alabama with this time and their particular offensive style right now run the clock out, go in with a 10-point lead at halftime. And they will get the ball. And they have the their half. choice. That's correct. They won the toss at the beginning and uh, elected to kick off, giving Boston College first possession. But uh, in so doing, guaranteed initial possession to start the second half. <laughs> Shula. Oh, he's lucky to get that one back. I don't know why in the world Vincent Munn didn't catch it. It was right in his hand. Too good a throw. <laughs> right in his hand. Shula lets this one slail a little bit on him. He's looking right at the, uh, his target. He didn't look down, feel like he wanted to probably just but the ball goes over the head of the receiver Gothard right through Munn's hands number 28. He would have had a nice return also. Mm -hmm. A lot of room coming this way. Second and 10. 20 seconds to play first half. Very good. Ooh, out of bounds. 12 seconds to go and a first down for Alabama on the Boston College side of the field at the Eagles 47. Tiffin is would be kicking into a slight win. I would I would guess for you Keith they'd have to complete one more pass of about 15 yards. They need about 15. And they have two timeouts left. His long kick 51. It was an Alabama record too. Yep. Of course we don't know he's older he's stronger. He could probably go beyond 51, but the wind is not a helping factor. 10 point, Alabama lead 24 14. Shula pulls it down. There's nobody available. So uh, Mike Ruth was storming, and uh, Shula heard the thunder, so he just pulled it down and ate it. Here's that matchup between two outstanding players Mavis number 54, Ruth number 68. You see what a nose guard faces. One man, two men. The guards all turn in on him. McIntosh, 62, finally tries to block him to no avail. Good play by Ruth. 24-14 Alabama. The leading coach is Ray Perkins. Here he is with Tim Brent. All right, Keith, thank you very much. I know you're a taskmaster and you want perfect play, but you've got to be happy with that first half, and specifically with Mike Shula. Well, I'm pleased. I'm exceptionally pleased with Mike Shula's play, Tim. I think he's handled himself extremely well and moved the football and scored points when we needed to. We missed on a couple of third down plays, but overall I'm pleased. But we've got we can't lose sight of the fact that we've got another half football to play, and that number 22 guy. 
He don't give up, and he makes some great plays, and I tell you what, he keeps coming back. Now, I know you want to get Vince Sutton into the ball game tonight as well and tried to earlier. Was it the touchdown yeah. that, that make, kept you uh, with yeah, Mike? Yeah, we wanted to get back in there with the other group and try to get that touchdown back. And uh, had, had we stopped them on defense there, we, we were going to go with the entire second offensive unit as well as Vince Sutton. You had them confused early, and the backside pressure was really causing problems. You were containing Flutie. Now he's starting to get loose. How do you adjust to that? Well, there at the end of the half, he was, they were using some stuff where, they, where they're blocking from an outside technique. He's dropping back and then sprinting out away from it, what we call a turmoil-type type play. It's just that we might have to make an adjustment at halftime if they come back and start using that on a regular basis, not just in a two-minute drill. Okay, Ray, thanks a lot. Good luck second Thank half. Thank you. All right, we'll return with our halftime activities here at Legion Field after this commercial message and a word from our local stations. This option, Harry... This option, Harry Gould is the deep man. His two previous kickoff returns have been 44 and 35 yards, giving Alabama's good field position each time. Snow's kickoff is quite high. They should have pretty good coverage on this. He takes it at the one. Gould gets a hole. He's got one man to beat. It's going to be 99 yards and a touchdown. Tiffin for the extra point try is good. 13 seconds into the second half, it's 31 14, Alabama. Everybody needs a back like Kerry Goo. 35, just the stop for outstanding speed. He has a free Peruth number 16. You can see the other tailback screens off momentarily, the kicker. And uh, Good nearly steps out of bounds, but he has outstanding speed. It's not even a close race as he goes all the way for the touchdown. That is not an Alabama record. Willis Shelby opened the second half against Kentucky in 1973 with a 100-yard kickoff return. Excellent blocking. There's a hole there. And what Jude does, all good players that return kickoffs know and understand. You see that crease, you hit it as quickly with as much speed as you can and turn on the blazer. Boy, that's got a shock. That's DC. Just the sophomore. Frankie's going to be a great football he, player. He is. And the coaches are so proud of the way he works and his dedication to being a better football player. Very short kickoff being returned by Carl Freshpain. And he brings the football out across the 25 up to the 27. John Hand, defensive tackle, 265 pounds. Kurt Jarvis, the nose guard, 265. Brent Sowell, 255, the other tackle. The linebackers, Cornelius Bennett, 6'4", 215. Emmanuel King, 6'4", 230. Scott McRae inside, 6'1", 210. Wayne Davis inside, 6'4", 210. Boston College comes up first down at their own 27, and they now trail by 16 points. 17 points, 31 to 14. Not Here's a handoff to Stratford. Troy Stratford picks up a couple of yards out to the 29. The secondary for Alabama and the area that uh, the coach, Ray Perkins, feels has improved. Freddie Robinson is one corner. Vernon Wilkinson is the other corner. They're both 6-1. Paul Tripoli, a six-footer at safety, and Britton Cooper, the free safety, at 6'1", 175 pounds. One of the surprises of the game so far is Gieselman, the tight end. I don't believe he's caught but one pass during the entire half, and he's been their favorite target. He Zero pass. No. caught in. They threw it to him, but he was well covered. This is a pass that bounces off the hands or perhaps bounced in front of Troy Stratford. 
Once again, Flutie's having to throw backing up. Same offensive unit starting the second half for Boston College that started the game. Flutie has not been able, Keith, to plant his foot very, on very many occasions and step forward and put some velocity on the ball. Alabama defense has been too effective with a relentless, consistent pressure. It is third down and eight for the Eagles. They try to fake a, they fake a counter inside. That ball is thrown off the hands of Scott Gieselman, and we've got a penalty flag. Flutie throwing on the run. They fake that counter back inside, and uh, if, in fact, Flutie had given him the football, he might still be running. Instead, he kept it and threw it, and the pass went awry. Bardwell, number 63, somehow lost his... Uh, direction and got downfield and it would be a five yard penalty and loss of down so they can go ahead and take the penalty because it's a loss of down anyway if they refuse it they just aren't familiar with the loss of down provision of that rule they are going to take it it'll bring up fourth down and 13 and then they'll, they'll go downfield damn, damn. offense loss of down Fourth down. And Steve Peach comes into the ball game for his fifth punt. Greg Richardson deep. If they handle it well, then Alabama should have pretty good field position for its first possession of the second half. Peach having a pretty good night kicking the ball. He's only had one short one of 30 yards. That's a good punt. Hangs up pretty well. Coverage looks like it's going to be pretty good for Richardson. He splits it. And then it's thrown out of bounds. Jim Brown, the Boston College fullback, shirt-tailed him and hurled him out of bounds. And Alabama will take possession on the Boston College 43. In the rarefied world of $40,000 luxury sedans, the BMW 733i is rare indeed. For it not only offers a host of luxury appointments, it also offers something quite uncommon in this class, high performance. Morning, Wilson. Morning, sir. Perhaps that's why chauffeur-driven BMWs are seldom driven, and by their chauffeurs. Buckle up, Wilson. Buckle up, sir. We had our show. I was a squad. Really? Then you got a right to chicken done right. I make it tender, juicy, and every bite. I make fresh hot biscuits and tasty fresh coleslaw. You got right, your chicken done right. Nobody makes chicken like we do with the Colonel's secret blend of herbs and spices. It's tender looking good. Kentucky Fried Chicken, we do chicken right. The Alabama second offensive unit is on the field now. Vince Sutton, 6'2", 190, freshman from LaGrange, Georgia, in at quarterback. Very, very strong arm. He was highly recruited by everybody in the country, I guess, who wanted a quarterback. And uh, they think he has a tremendous future. Don Horstead uh, is number 39, and Paul Ott Carruth is tailback, and Carruth has the football. Stumbles a little bit as he starts to turn the corner and still picks up about six yards. David Thomas is the defensive end for Boston College, 230 pounds. Scott Harrington, 260. Mike Ruth, the nose guard, 255. John Boza, 250 at tackle. And Chuck Gorecki is at 235, defensive end. Linebacker is Ted Gaffney, 6'2", 220. Andy Hammer, 6'1", 230. And the uh, Boston College defense has been on the field a lot this evening. Second down and four. And Sutton on a roll. Penalty flag is down. Whips the ball. The pass is complete to Joe Smith. And Smith fumbles the football, and Boston College covers it. And Boston College will have it first down at their own four. There's a penalty flag way back up field, however. Let's see about that. Todd Russell covered the loose football for BC. It's a holding call against Alabama, and I am sure Boston College will take possession. Well, Sutton looked good. The young freshman quarterback rolling out. He drilled the ball right into the receiver. For the completion over on the boundary, showed a lot of poise on his first college snap. Well, he popped it, didn't he? He popped it in there and uh, read the defense perfectly. Holding offense, 
decline. First down. Now look at the play now. Watch the watch the snap on this pass. Two. That's the first time Smith's seen the ball all night. David Pereira was the man that made the hit and knocked the ball loose. Doug Flutie now out of his end zone. Goes over the middle with it. The pass is complete. To the tight end, Brandon Murphy. And Murphy takes a wallop. And I don't know if he's going to get up. Whoa, did he take a lick. I don't know who it was that hit Brendan Murphy, but he just nailed it. But he held on to the football, and Boston College is out of the pickle right now with a first down out on the 30. When you have a collision at 180 degrees, as we'll see Flutie fake and get it deep in the end zone, throws it over the linebacker's head. The receiver and the defensive back are running, Wilkinson, are running 180 degrees apart, and that's when the force really hurts. Look like some of the Alabama medical people came across. Uh, Vernon Wilkinson is also down from the hit. It was Vernon Wilkinson, the uh, cornerback, who had hurt his knee. It looks like they, the helmets bang right together. So Alabama and Boston College Medical Corps both busy right now. When you take one of these things up, you've got a crew to help. Test pilot Chuck Yeager for AC Delco. When it comes to my car or truck, I do the work myself. In 40 years, AC spark plugs have never let me down. And with today's technology, AC fire ring spark plugs are engineered to give you up to 30,000 miles reliable performance. Never wait for trouble. Go with AC fire ring spark plugs. Call 800 AC. -Bar. Coach Barry Fritzer takes a determined Oklahoma spot east to battle the high powered Pitt Panthers. Next Saturday, live at 3.30 Eastern on ABC. Both players got up and walked off the field. I would not say that the steps were decisive, but they made it off on their own power. A nose problem for Brandon Murphy at a nose bleed. And uh, the ice pack is on his face. The ice pack is on the shoulder of Vernon Wilkerson. But both of them walked off the field. And it's first down, Boston College at the 30. A handoff to Forrest Stratford. And Stratford is caught from behind by number 57, Randy Rockwell. And he picks up on the play close to five yards. Doug Flutie needs for the running game to at least pick up some yardage to slow the blitz down. A running game will slow the blitz down. No running. You see every type of stunt possible from the opposing defenses. Call it second down and six. Ball is just about to 35. Flutie, play action, runs out of the pack, turns it upfield, gets a big gain out of it, picks up a first down up around his 47-yard line. So Boston College again comes up with a play on the second down. Flutie is going to set up the end coming from the outside. Puts a little pressure on him. He gets run out of the play, though, by the fullback, Brown. And Flutie cuts up inside and dives and slides for the first down. Emmanuel King and Cornelius Bennett out of the ball game right now. The outside linebackers for Alabama are Craig Epps, 91, and Randy Rockwell, 57. Ball snapped at the 47. Flutie rolls it left. He's got Gieselman down the middle. Goes instead to the outside, Kelvin Martin. Martin turns it back inside and reaches the Alabama 33 for another Boston College first down. Picking up on what Keith said, Gieselman was open. There was one cornerback out trying to cover two receivers. Here we have Martin going on the out pattern. The linebacker Triple E was uh, free safety. Triple E was right there, but couldn't make the play. Flutie now 10 out of 24 for 152 yards. Map is on the 33. Stratford carries and can't get to the outside. Kurt Jarvis, the nose guard, locks his legs. Here's Tim Brent. After that tremendous collision out on the field, they're still working on Brendan Murphy. They have just finished. The impact brought the helmet down onto the bridge of his nose and split it wide open. So they have taken some steri strips to close the, the gash on his nose. They say they will suture it after the ball game. But right now, he wants to get back in, so they just put some Band-Aids on it. 
a tough Irishman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Boston College is averaging uh, 2.7 yards per rush in this ball game so far. Alabama, on the other hand, about five and a half. Flutie throws it outside. Diving try by Kelvin Martin. It is ruled incomplete. He trapped it. Martin is going down. He has enough speed to make the defensive back have a good cushion. Now he breaks it off, and he should come back to the ball. Flutie has got a little bit of pressure. Uh, has to throw the ball without having a chance to set his feet. The ball goes through his arms and onto the turf. Incomplete third down. A big play from Boston College. Third down and 11. They have three out of nine on third down conversion tries tonight. Inside, it's Phelan. The split end, working as a flanker off that play, runs a counter, and they've got him short of the first down. He turned it back up inside, though, and had a big hole at the line of scrimmage. The rush is going on between Jarvis and uh, 78 hand you can see they take themselves right out of the play the pulling guard does not have to trap he can turn up field McDonald number 79 leads the play and a nice game fourth down and four now you've got Bennett and King back in that ball game Rudy trying to get his first down gets his pass off the pass is complete he threw the ball as he was falling down to Troy Stratford and gets the first down at the 15. He was across the yard line, too, Keith. They're going to call the play back. They, I would think, yeah. They waited and waited and waited, and so it's a loss of down and the, and the uh, penalty, so um, Alabama will take over. The officials debated and debated as to whether he had crossed the line of scrimmage. Any part of his body beyond where the neutral zone was is illegal. Alabama's ball. It'll come out around the 30. All right, now it, the line of scrimmage is the 27. He okay. threw it at about the 26, I think. Two outside rushes. King, number 92, comes inside, puts the pressure on him. Yeah, he's across the line of scrimmage when he yes, turns loose. Yes, any part of his body across the neutral zone, illegal pass attempt. And so Alabama will take over, thwarting that Boston College offensive possession. It looked like Doug was shaken up some as he was caught by Emmanuel King, but he grins and walks it off, and Vince Sutton is in at quarterback with uh, Ricky Moore and Carruth lined up behind him, and this is Moore. Moore is missed by one man. Number 81, Andy Hemmer, turned him inside, couldn't get a lick on him, and he turned him back into Mike Ruth, and that took care of that. One thing that Boston College had hoped to do was force Alabama offense into a passing game, being able to stop the run. But Kerry Good, the offensive line, Ricky Moore are just too talented uh, tonight for Boston College to succeed with their plan. There's the stats on Doug. I believe he's all right, though. Second down at about seven. Sutton gives it to Carruth and falls up to the 36. So they'll be looking at third down and four, and here's Tim. Keith, I just talked to Doug Flutie. He said he came down on his left shoulder and jammed it a little bit. He said it's tight, it is sore. He's trying to keep it loose. He thinks he's going to be okay. He's certainly going to go back into the ball game. Thank you. Just so it's not his right shoulder. Nope. <laughs> nope. <clears throat> third down and about four. It's a short four. Almost in the middle again. Sutton stands up. It's picked off. Intercepted by Tony Thurman. And he's out of bounds. Down the 10 yard line. Tony Thurman steps in front of the Sutton pass. So the young man from LaGrange tried to force one, and it blew up in his face. Thurman is the safety man. He times it beautifully. This is his 16th career interception. He comes up all the way from the free safety and intercepts that pass. Beautiful timing. Pass was intended for Peru. Sutton finally knocks him out of bounds. That's his third interception this season. Boston College has the football. First down at the Alabama 10. And the ball is just perhaps short of the 10. Very close to the line. 
tough country when you got to go 10 yards and four downs down here. Flutie hands it inside to Strahan. And Steve Strahan does a pretty good job on the first down play as he fights his way down to about the five and inside, perhaps. Alabama was concentrating on Flutie, Flutie to the outside and left a little bit of running room up the middle. Last Thurman, he said his third interception of the season, two last week, 15th career interception. Ball is just inside the five, so it was a big gain by Steve Strahan, who comes off the field now. And Jim Brown replaces him at uh, the fullback position. Boston College with three tight ends in the backfield, uh, in the lineup. Moody rolls it left, cuts it back in the middle, dives, touchdown, Boston College. Moody repeated the same play that he made the big play on their second touchdown, an option to the weak side. You can see that he's going to just spin right there. The guard's going to pull and trap out the defensive end, which allows Fruity, Flutie, to step inside and make the touchdown. A good maneuver, good cut right there by Doug to go in for the touchdown. He just stepped away from Scott McCray, the inside linebacker, number 45, to get it across the goal line. So it's 7.21 to go in this third quarter. We're about to be looking, perhaps, at another 10-point ball game. Alabama had been leading by 17. Snow's chip shot try for the extra point is dead center. And that's where we are, 10 points. Alabama 31, Boston College 21. Well, Boston College insisting on making this a football contest, aren't they? Flutie, you give him enough opportunities, and he will stick, help stick the ball into the end zone enough to win most games. Their problem has been getting the ball away from Alabama. I would expect Alabama to go to two tight end off offense and try to control the ball as they're going against the win this will be in the third quarter. They keep the ball away from him as long as they can keep the Boston College offense on the bench. They have things in hand. It's a skittering, bouncing kickoff that's picked up by Kerry Good at the nine-yard line. This time, Boston College is able to handle it. Last time he had one of those, he went 99 yards. There's a little scrambling around for the ball, but it will remain in the possession of Alabama. Next Saturday, 3.30 to 7 here on ABC, Oklahoma and Pittsburgh. One of the few times those teams have played during the regular season. In fact, it may be the first time they've ever played. Oklahoma winning its opener 19 to 7 a day over Stanford. Danny Bradley had a big day. Carried it 30 times, gained 108 yards as Oklahoma goes back to the wishbone offense. Mike Shula is the quarterback. Pitches the ball back to Good and Good starting at the 28. Runs it out across at the 23, rather. Runs it out across the 25 to the 26. And he's a little slow in what he's not going to get up. And he's ho um, holding his knee. Good, I believe, is holding his knee. We hope it's nothing serious. Boston College has really got to play some defense now. This is the critical test for that defensive unit. Can they rise to the occasion, as we say, and take the ball away very quickly and give Flutie some more time with the win in this third quarter? While the medical people are looking at Kerry Good, here scores Clemson rolling over Virginia 55 to nothing. Duke defeating Indiana 31-24. And our producer, uh, uh, Mr. Chuck Howard, has just let go with a Yahoo, having been a Blue Devil. Virginia Tech edging Wake Forest 21-20. And uh, Vanderbilt leading Kansas State 20-14 in the fourth quarter. Minnesota and Rice 21-21. Watson Brown, his first game as the head coach of the Rice Owls. And Arizona, California, 7-6 at halftime. Arizona was upset last week by Fresno State. Jim Sweeney. Yep. Number, Number one, Miami, uh, knocked uh, down today by Michigan. Uh, Kozar intercepted six times. Number two, Nebraska, had it relatively easy over the Wyoming Cowboys. They handled Wyoming's wishbone pretty well. And Ohio State had to come from behind to beat Oregon State. Uh, Purdue upset Notre Dame, 23-21. Kerry Good is up now and walking off the field. And scarcely limping. The other scores as they roll by. Chuck Long had a big day for the Iowa Hawkeyes. That gets a roar from the crowd. 
They know how valuable he is. Fine athlete. Alabama coaches couldn't say enough nice things about Kerry Good and his attitude. How hard he works. That was a pretty good scuffle in the SEC today. That 21-21. Georgia beat uh, Southern Miss by seven. They had to come from behind to do that. Second down now and seven for Alabama. The ball is at the 31. Mike Shula back to throw it. Swings it out to Ricky Moore's fullback. He's still pumping away. He almost had a first down at one time, but he took a whack and knocked him backwards, kept his feet, and by the time he got his balance, Boston College was able to stop him short of the first down. Seldom do you see one man make the clean tackle on Ricky Moore. Most of the time, it takes two and sometimes three to get him on the ground. Six foot one, 235 pounds. Very crucial down right now for the Boston College defense. They need to get possession of the ball. It's third and about a yard and a half. Paul out Garuth trying for it and gets it as he gets to the 40. Boston College had a shot at him. Number 17, Tony Thurman, took a shot at him but missed him. And Garuth was able to pick up the first down. 31-21 ball game. 10-point lead Alabama, 5.59 to play third quarter. You look for Boston College to make some extreme measures to try to get the running game of Alabama slowed down and force them into a passing game. They haven't been successful so far. Shula trying to set up the screen. The ball is knocked loose. And slapped out of bounds. West Neighbors was pursuing the ball, but I don't think the pass was complete as Paul Ott Garuth was out there. They were trying to set up a screen far across the field, and when Paul caught it, wacko. David Thomas, number 50, has had an outstanding game with 10 tackles in the first half. He's number 50. He's an excellent pass rush. You watch him just keep going. He's coming back in there to try to make Shula throw the ball quicker and he has to throw the ball Stula does and Alabama's lucky to get the ball back forced him into a lob yes which gave the defensive people time to react to it so it's second down and 15 there's that little trouble pass to play there in earlier and Ricky Moore is caught behind the line of scrimmage by number 52 uh, for Boston College that's Scott Harrington, the defensive tackle. You know, Scott Harrington drops off on passes sometimes. Keith, he's a tackle, moves over to nose guard, and Ruth moves over to left tackle because they need for the nose guard to be able to play the screens and the draws, and he timed it perfectly on that last play. They must have called that pass complete to Ruth to give him a five-yard loss, right? Yes, they did. Paul got up. He was arguing that he'd never had possession of it. So third down and 15. Shula's pass knocked down at the line of scrimmage. It looked like Chuck Gorecki was the man that got a hand on it, and so Boston College, with that uh, loss on the screen pass, and then the subsequent uh, handling of Moore, are able to force Alabama into a kick. Right now, They'll get possession of the ball and should have fair field position. I'm a little bit surprised that Alabama went to the passing on that series rather than running the, the football all three downs. Harry Sanders is in the punt now. He's kicked one time previously. 49 yards. Kelvin Martin is deep, and that is a beautiful punt. At the 19, he calls at the 20 a fair catch. So BC's ball, first down at their own 20 with four and a half minutes to go in the third quarter, and they trail by 10 points. Well, here's the the big little man, or as some want to call him, up in New England, Sir Douglas of the Darts. 10 out of 26 for 152 yards. His team is down by 10. They go to work at the 20. Palin has been quiet lately. And the football off to Brown, the fullback, two yards. That'll do it. Tim Brandt. Keith, ever since the injury, they've been working on Kerry Goode's knee. They have tested it. They've moved it around. They don't think there's a tear in there. There is a bruise. He's in a lot of pain. He's tried to walk. I doubt very seriously he'll be back in the ballgame tonight. Right now, they're just going to pack it in ice. 
That's taken away one of the primary uh, weapons of the Alabama offense. 78 yards tonight received. You have a look at the return third. yards. And 307 yards ain't bad for one three quarters. He's outstanding. Here. Second down and eight. Beauty on a deep drop. Gets it off over the middle to Stratford. Stratford trying for the first down is short of it at the 28. Once again, Flutie was under extreme heavy pressure. Had to just lay the ball off to the halfback for short yardage. In the third quarter, Goodyear Blip Enterprise floating over Legion Field with Dr. Jim Maloney. The crowd is 67,821. Here comes the blitz. Third and two. Stratford trying to pop it outside. And he can get there. That's a fine defensive play by Paul Tripoli, a senior from Liverpool, New York. Fifth year senior. He finally got a scholarship this year. And he just paid for it right there. Talking to Lewis Campbell, the defensive uh, backfield coach, he said Tripoli has had a good practice. He's steady. He knows where to be. And he's in the right place at the right time. That was a perfect example. Peaches in the punt. Richardson drops for Alabama. 2.40 to go. Third quarter clock running. 10 points. Man a lead. Kick is away. Pretty good one. Richardson disdains the fair catch and it's 36. Dancing around. Gets some return yardage out of it from the 36 out to about the 46. Close to 10 yards. 37 yard punt. The Washington Redskins and San Francisco 49ers live on ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. Next Monday night, it'll be 9 Eastern time. They're playing out on the coast, I believe, aren't they? Both, both quarterbacks being from Notre Dame. Joe Feisma, Joe Montana. Two great players. It's first down Alabama. Good field position. They're on 46. They send Carruth in motion. Give the ball in the middle to Ricky Moore. Now that once again the goal of Boston College try to force Alabama into a passing game last time last possession Alabama threw three times in the possession did not make a first down two minutes to go in the third quarter Here's a very interesting statistic well that's why Kerry good was so important return and, yardage yep second down at about eight a little quick pop over here to Richardson for a wide receiver screen. And Richardson is brought down by David Thomas, who slipped outside and stayed at home and made a good defensive turn. play. Defensive ends just have multiple assignments. They have to rush the pass that we saw Thomas put the pressure on uh, uh, Shula in the earlier series. Now he's covering the men coming out of the backfield. He recognizes the screen. He gets blocked right there. Uh, by one of the, the linemen of Alabama turns around and makes the play. David Johnson, the tackle, was trying to take him out and couldn't do it. Picked up about five yards. First, it's uh, second down and a third down and five on the Boston College 49. Shoeless pass is deflected. And number 41 looked like Dave Pereira came in there and Pereira got a hand on the ball. He's out of Riverside, Rhode Island. And so it brings up fourth down for uh, Alabama, and they'll have to give up the ball with a minute and a second to play in the third quarter. What we're seeing by the Boston College defense is using an extra man, the strong safety of Piero, into the running play, knowing that Shula is not going to throw the ball deep downfield, not likely to. He's been throwing mostly short passes where the halfbacks can come. Sanders, uh, Terry Sanders, with kicks of 49 and 43 now. Let's see if he tries to kill it. He gets it way up. Gets a little tail dragger out of it. Tough one to catch. Calvin Martin is bumped into. And you get a penalty flag. He had come up. Did he call fair catch? I think he did. And Ken Moriarty was able to cover the ball after it had hit Martin. But if he, in fact, had made a clear fair catch signal and then was bumped into by an Alabama man. The defensive men have to stay with it at least two yards away from the safety man on any punt where the Flight of the ball is down with that's the rule that we had last year. Here's the signal for the fair catch. Legitimate signal, 15 yards. Now you see the Alabama man is 
closer than two yards to it. That is illegal. First down. That's only a five-yard penalty. So what they're penalizing for is somebody interfering with an opportunity for a fair catch, and it was the Alabama man that ran right by him. He was at the last minute just to the right side of the safety man. It effectively gives Boston College good field position up on their 35 for the first down snap. Gerard Phelan's been pretty quiet here in the third quarter. Flutie swings that ball out to Stratford. And Troy works his way up to about the 44. Nine yards on that particular play. Here final scores now in the American League, Minnesota. And in the National League, oh, look at here. Chicago beat New York six to nothing. So the Mets uh, cupped them around last night, and the Cubs returned the favor today. The Cubbies look like they're headed for the National League playoffs. Well, it's great for base baseball to have the Cubs and the, the Mets up there battling for the, for the pennant. Yeah. Second down and one. That's it. Trying to bounce it outside and get the first down, and it does. Up around the 48. Well, it's still ticking. Four seconds to go in the third quarter in a 31 to 21 ball game. It's not over with. It, just putting myself in the place of Ray Perkins, he's worried. The offense has been shut down the last two or three possessions. Flutie can score very quickly if he gets a hot hand. Get the ball across that goal line in very short order. Sometimes it's hard to get a team to play 60 minutes in the opening game of the season. But they were so, so effective in that first half. Yep. That's a very good point. Moody back. Good protection, and he shoots one down the middle to Gieselman. And this time, Scott handles it. But then it looked like he fumbled it, but he's come back with the ball. They're tossing it down at near the Alabama 30. And that's his first catch in the ball game. And Phelan is right over there, Johnny on the spot. This is excellent protection, something that uh, Flutie hasn't had too much of that commodity so far. He's able to turn back, and he gets an alley to throw the ball right there. No lineman in his way. Gieselman catches it, but he's going to he's searching for the ball right there. I uh, can't tell who that is, 57 Rockwell. The ball pops out, but Phelan, the wide receiver, is right on it. So Gerard Phelan saves it. We've played three quarters, and we'll continue our game after this commercial message and a word from our local station. Boston College first down at the Alabama 30 with 15 minutes to play. Here comes Troy Stratford, and he's belted down maybe a yard on the carry. The third quarter stats. Alabama was very quiet in the third quarter, mostly Boston College. Two or three things to notice. Boston College now has the lead in, in total offense, and time of possession is exactly even, 22-30 and 22-30. A big fourth quarter. Big game games are won in the fourth quarter. Second down, call it 10. Dombrowski and Phelan both in now at wide receiver. Bennett looping from the outside, forces the quick pass, complete to Dombrowski down at the 27. A gain of three yards on the play as Cornelius Bennett came looping in. He forced the quick throw by Flutie. Bennett is a dominant football player. 6'4", 215, just a sophomore, had an outstanding year playing as a freshman. You can see why he's a dominant football player. His legs never stop. He goes right through the full background. And that's the kind of play that uh, Lawrence Taylor would make, and that's what Ray Perkins told me this afternoon. That he's like, uh, much like Lawrence Taylor. Third down and seven. Flutie turns around and looks. Loops it to Phelan. First down at the Alabama 11. He threw that thing sidearm. He had a little daylight and fired it right up the crack. One thing about Flutie, awareness, awareness, awareness. What do we mean by awareness? Know where your receivers are. Know where the rush is. Know how to scramble. Know when to stop. Know how to fire the ball right into the numbers. Just an incredible play. Watch Phelan get open. Knowing he's covered right there by Bennett, man to man. He loses Bennett, breaks to the inside, 
right on the money with Flutie for the first down. Oh, he's a tough receiver. Yes, he knows what he's doing. Flutie, 15 out of 31 now for 209 yards. The running game with Scott Flutie is good for a yard, and that'll do it. Scott McRae, the linebacker, came in and knifed through and made a great play. Number 45 can run good speed, 4-6, knifed through and tackled Stratford for no gain. Boston College more than likely will have to throw the ball. It's tough to run the ball in against this Alabama team. Second down and nine from the ten. Murphy back in the ball game, number 85. The pitch goes to Stratford. Stratford is caught. And number 23, Paul Tripoli. Very, very surprising that they would want to run as we look at Ray Perkins. Really worried right now. His team has lost their momentum, but the defense is playing like a typical Alabama defense. Keith, we've seen so many times opponents get down to the goal line and fail to put it in. As we look at Jack Bicknell, two calls there running the ball from the 10-yard line. I know that he wishes he had those back. He would call something different. Ball is outside the 11 now. Third down. And Flutie spends a timeout with 11 minutes and 52 seconds to play. He didn't like what he saw. He didn't like the people he had at particular positions. So rather than waste the play, he spends the timeout. It'll be third down and 11. Ball is outside the 11-yard line. Keep looking ahead. If they fail to make uh, a first down, will they go for a field goal to make it trail, hopefully, by seven points or go for the touchdown? I think he's got to go for three. Two, but they did once before. They went for the touchdown on fourth and four. Got it. <laughs> They're having a hard time getting this playoff. The officials have stopped it three times for some reason. Here it comes. Towards the end of the stadium. Pass to Phelan drop. A rare thing. Gerard Phelan had the ball right in his hands and dropped it. Down around the seven-yard line. And so that brings in the kicker. Kevin Snow kicked two field goals against Penn State last year to clinch the win. Yeah, he hit a 40-yarder into a 25-mile-an-hour win. Here's Phelan. Phelan dropping the ball right in his hands. I'm sure he wanted to. He knew he had to run for the extra yardage, and he was thinking about that. 27-yard field goal by Kevin Snow. Phelan holds it. It's up. And plenty long and good. And so with 11 minutes and 43 seconds to play in the football game, we're now at seven points. Alabama 31, Boston College 24. The web begins to tighten around your neck just a little bit. Well, Alabama is now without Kerry Good, who's been their top performer tonight. This is a tough, tough position to place a young quarterback like Mike Shula in. Alabama's got tough strategy here to side. They haven't been successful running the ball, as Keith mentioned, without good. Can they throw the ball with an inexperienced quarterback? Is it risky? Is it too risky to throw the ball? I think they're going to have to mix it up, Keith. They're going to have to try to keep that ball some way, maybe too tight in as they start the ball game. That's why Doug Flutie is uh, one of the prime candidates for the Heisman Trophy. Caruth will go back as the deep man on the kickoff now by Boston College. Good laid up with a sore knee. They think it's a bruise. Ruth is a veteran and good sharp runner, but not as fast and explosive as Good. Paul's got it. And comes. See, that's what makes him tough right there. Second effort. They had him full dead on the 20, and he slipped outside and picked up another seven yards. The noise factor is something relatively new, I think, to Boston College. I talked to Doug Flutie about it yesterday. 
That's true. That could be a factor. That could be a big problem, especially in audible, audibleizing at the line of scrimmage. It's exciting for us to come into play in a stadium such as this, and you know we don't we don't get this opportunity too often. And it's a chance for us to be in the limelight, being major college football, you know what it really is. And we're excited about the opportunity to be down here and play in Alabama, and we think we have a good shot of winning too. And they're certainly still in the hunt. A handoff by Mike Shula to Paul Carruth, and Paul Ott Carruth gets out across the 30 to the 32. Good, tough running back, Carruth. The operation a year ago forced him to lay out all of the 83 seats. Worked hard to rehabilitate it. Now he's back in the lineup. It's second down and six for Alabama. 31 24, Alabama by seven. They led it one time 21 7 and 31 to 14. This is a little swing pass thrown out to Carruth. This time Boston College plays it very well, and Alabama's going to lose about three yards on that play as Andy Hemmer, a sophomore from Cincinnati, the linebacker, played it very, very well. Alabama has lost their cohesion, it seems to me, Keith. They're kind of floundering from a run up the middle and mixing up their passes. Without good, they just aren't the same football team. And Joe Smith, that uh, split in, has seen the ball only one time. Uh, Sutton hit him, and then he fumbled it away. Third down and nine. Shula's pass, tipped in the air, and he catches it. I think, made the catch. The ball was slapped up in the air, and Paul Ott takes the catch, and Mike Shula is hurt. What a sensational effort by a fifth-year senior to save and make the first down. If they, they're calling it, well, they're not sure whether it's complete or not. Oh, there's a penalty, key. Penalty flag, yeah. I'm watching Shula right now, and it's that right leg. Was that the leg that he hurt previously? Well, he had a broken leg in the spring, and he went back and in the Miami uh, Dolphins uh, facilities and rehabilitated that leg. Just a gutty effort on his part to get it in shape to play this season he as his father said he's worked long and hard for this opportunity oh I hate the injuries oh. if we could find some way to prevent knee injuries the football game would be a lot more fun to coach and play it does break your heart let's that define the penalty here coming up now as we see the replay Bobby I is going to define that penalty ouch boy the, the lineman foul Offense, third down. Well, it's a personal foul against Alabama. Look at Ruth, number 68, on the lower part of your screen. You're going to see Ruth, number 68, dive to try to make the play right there. He, his headgear, oh, excuse me, his shoulder pad, hits Mike Shuler with his cleats locked into the turf. We hope that it's nothing serious. They're still working on him. How much of a penalty was that? 15 yards? Yep, 15 yards. Personal foul. I didn't see it anywhere. Out the deep. Well, he's walking. I'm sure his mother, Dorothy, is watching here in the stadium, held her breath. And Dad, who's uh, got a little time he thought he might have uh, to see the second half, has probably taken a deep sigh of relief too. Third down and 25. Freshman quarterback in the ball game. His last play was an interception. Let's see what happens. He's thrown two passes and both of them have been turnovers. That's Carruth carrying. And he gets out to about the 17 and so they will punt it away. Here's where the punting game really makes a difference. Keith, you mentioned it earlier. This is this one area that Alabama has an edge in the kicking game and Simmons will be kicking with the wind Sanders I mean excuse me Simmons last year <laughs> Sanders uh, last kick one he tried to kill deep and it got up in the wind and hung up there on him it was only 31 yards his other two have been 49 and 43 this time the winds behind him there's no pressure on him and he gets it out of there pretty good kick and a fair catch is called by Kelvin Martin for Boston College back at the 42. It's a 41 yard punt. So here's BC trailing by seven points. They have good field position, 919 to play. 
Today, more and more people are thinking Culligan instead of water. A Culligan drinking water system gives you better tasting water for less than bottled. So maybe today you call it water, but tomorrow? The picture call. Thanks, Savannah Man. The picture call for Culligan. Hi, my computer. Hey, day by my computer. No, by my computer. There's one way to cut through today's computer clutter. Compare other business computers with Radio Shack's Tandy TRS-80 Model 2000. Judge the ease of operation, speed, graphics, software, and price. Compare. I believe your informed buying decision will be the Tandy 2000 personal computer. See it during September at $300 off. We invite comparison. Well, let's see if Doug Flutie can bring his magic into play here. He is just now trotting into the huddle for Boston College. First down, Eagles. The ball is out near their 43-yard line. A lot of time left, 9-19 to play. Alabama leading by seven points, 31-24. Flutie keeps it. Pulls it down and takes off upfield. And then sits down at the 49 of Alabama. A couple of yards short of the first down, but it was a logical uh, decision. Once again, awareness. The one thing that the Boston College coaches keep saying about Flutie, what's his strong part? Awareness, awareness. Knowing what to do with the football on any and virtually all circumstances to get the best out of the play he possibly can. That's Shula with the knee. Flexing it. Looks like he's going to be all right. That's good news. Yep. Second down and two. This is Stratford. He's got the first down at the 45 of Alabama. And Vernon Wilkinson brings him down. Boy, that Wilkinson is a hard hitter. He's the one that hit the Irishman for the Murphy for the tight end. He's hurt for the third time in the ball game. Three times he's been down. You've got a timeout for him right now. And let's check in with Tim Brent. Keith, Mike Shuler, you can see him in the background, is testing that knee. It is the inside of the knee. I talked to the doctor. He said it is strained ligaments. They don't know the extent of the damage, how bad it is, how bad the strain is. Hopefully not a tear, but he is in pain. He just said it's very, very sore. He's not likely to get back in the ball game. Eight minutes and 33 seconds to play, and they're working on Vernon Wilkinson right now. This is Mr. Goodwrench. Did you know that your GM car's engine uses more air than gasoline? For every sip of gas, it takes 15 gulps of air. That's why a clean air filter helps keep you from wasting power or damaging your engine. So let Mr. Goodwrench check your oil, fuel, and air filters. Chances are you'll... 121, most of them Alabama partisans. They've gotten a little quiet here in this fourth quarter. 8.33 to play, 31-24, seven-point lead. First down, Boston College, Alabama 45. Flutie hands it off to Stratford. He's got a big hole. And he's got a first down at the Alabama 34-yard line. Lewis Dean brought him down. Dean in replacing uh, Vernon Wilkinson, who was shaken up a moment ago. Dean is a redshirt freshman, and uh, if Dean doesn't make this play, it's a touchdown. Stratford finds a big hole. Hand took the inside route and opened up a hole for him. You can see the running ability of Stratford. But Dabrowski did not make the block that would have sprung Stratford for the touchdown. Stratford now totaling 64 yards on the ground, 47 in the air. Troy has 111 for the game. Here's Flutie. Throws it back the other way to Brown, the fullback. And Brown gets another first down for Boston College at the 22 of Alabama. Awareness again. Brown knowing that his he had faked Brown into the left halfback. He's going to block over on the other side. He has no one to block. Then he's taught to just release out in the flat. Flutie knows that. He looks downfield. He doesn't see anybody. Then he gets the ball right to Brown, number 32. All Jim Browns wear 32. <laughs> yes, they do, don't they? Boston College scored 14 points at Foxborough a year ago to beat Alabama 2013 in the fourth quarter. Bradford spinning to the 20. One thing that this drive has done is quieten the Alabama crowd. This 
Well, here's statistical evidence of that. In the second half, Boston College has 11 first downs and Alabama one. That does surprise you after the way Alabama dominated the first half. Well, you take away the 99-yard kickoff return for the touchdown by Good. It's going to be time. There's Jack McNell. Very creative in his offensive play. Giving Flutie a chance to really operate. Pressure's on. Emmanuel King, the play for Alabama. The outside linebacker and the senior from Leroy, Alabama. Keith, that's the first time I've seen a defensive end stop Flutie on this play. It's a naked bootleg. King is going to go across. He's not going to be blocked. And Flutie usually can give a little shoot and step up inside. But King is just too good an athlete. Flutie couldn't do it. He had to throw the ball off balance. It goes incomplete and gives him a long third down. Third and eight. They're four out of 13 on third down conversion. Flutie flips it out to Stratford. He's at the 15, the 13. Close to his first down. Very close. According to where they give him the spot, it's going to be less than a foot for if it's not a first down. And obviously, Boston College will go for it. They need seven points. They don't need three. And he got a pretty good spot. It's going to be very close. About a foot. Just about a foot. <laughs> the coaches earned this salary. <laughs> I hate to say, Ooh, but that's what I might have been saying down on the goal line. Here comes an extra Alabama lineman in the ball game. The strong safety goes out. It's going to be an eight-man front. Gap every hole. Alabama's famous for this. Rahan is in. Rudy fakes it, throws it, down, touchdown! Now do they go for two? Or do they tie the game up? Well, you got almost six minutes to play, 558. Uh, this afternoon in that ball game, uh, LSU and Florida, Florida went for the tie, figuring uh, they'd have a chance to get the ball back to win it. Well, they didn't. Keith, I haven't given, and we haven't given Flutie credit. He is the surprise, innovator, unorthodox, unscheduled, unprogrammed quarterback that I have ever seen. He did the same thing. No, he, that is a little bit of a commentator's exaggeration. About that. <laughs> but we deserve, we get one of those every once in a while. Absolutely. He 18 did. out of 36, 240 yards and two touchdowns, and he's brought his team from a 16-point deficit in the second half. They're and going for two. Chance to tie. They're going to go for two, it looks like. 5.58 to play. We'll be back to see what Boston College decides to do. Denerex shampoo and conditioner versus head and shoulders regular formula. On this side, I can feel a tingling sensation. There's something going on up there. And this side, it's, there's not much happening. Look what you used. Well, this is the brand that I usually use, and this is uh, Denerex. Each shampoo has one medicine for dandruff. Denerex adds an extra anti-itch medicine, and Denerex adds conditioner, too. My hair is a lot more manageable. Feels nice. Goodbye, head and shoulders. Hello, Denerex. Get Denerex dandruff shampoo that conditions, too. Don't you wish everything fit like leaves? Fit like leaves do. Decided to go for the tie with five minutes and 58 seconds to play in the game. Snow is in the kick. I think that uh, uh, Boston College is based on this decision on the fact that Alabama's only made one first down this entire second half. We got a sore legged quarterback apparently, Mike Schuler. He's scheduled to go back in, we're told. They need this point right here. Phelan puts it down, Snow hits it, and it's good. So we are all even. Not 31 31. I hate the old cliche college football at its best, but we have seen some kind of turnaround. 31 to 14 was the score with a 99 yard touchdown kickoff return. Demoralized? Heck no. They came right back and put, what, uh, 17 points on the board and tied it up. That young man right there, when you talk to the coaches, they say incredible, unbelievable. I was copying them. Keith. That really wasn't a commentator <laughs> exaggeration. I was copying their coaches. Natick Mass is where he comes from. It's Keith, one thing. Doug Flutie coming in this ball game is averaging 16 yards per reception. That's an NCAA record pace. 14 6 14 by Jim McMahon from Brigham Young holds the record now. 
You can see when we say Flutie throws the ball downfield, that is what he does. None of, none of that nickel and dime stuff. Mm -mm. His percentage is not that impressive, just over 50% for his career, but look at the yardage he picks up. Kevin Snow ready. Caruth is deep. Boots it on the ground. It's picked up by number 30, Chester Braggs. And Braggs is really busted. Boston College flying high. Peter Holy downfield to slam him to the turf. Let's watch that Alabama bench and see if they can really get something going. Well, Auburn highly heralded. Came out of the box and lost to Miami. Alabama, a lot of us, me included, thought this could be a very, very good team if the quarterbacks delivered. Well, Boston College has turned it around in the second half, and it's 31 even. Shula is in there. This is Caruth. Ball off Caruth. Breaks one tackle, breaks another one, and keeps on pounding out to the 27. Oh. That's Boston. about eight yards on that carry, and Ruth was the guy that he ran through. Boston College had three white shirts in the backfield. Ruth, number 68, is their strongest. He is slanting or moving to the outside, uses that arm strength. Now he releases, along with him, a number 81. They kind of knock each other off, though. Mm -hmm. Tackle. Ruth Second makes down to about a yard and a half. It's for Ruth. Over the right side, and he's got the first down as he crosses the 30. I'm sure what Ray Perkins would like to do here is be relatively conservative and uh, just simply keep on punching the ball downfield and use as much of that precious time as possible in this possession. Are you surprised like I am that uh, Ricky Walker, Ricky Moore, hadn't carried the ball too much this day? I am. He's a leading ball carrier. For Only the three. second first down for Alabama now in the second half and I don't think Moore has seen it more than two or three times in the second half. At six consecutive 100 yard games coming into the tonight's contest. Scaruth again. And they're trying to grind it. He gets a yard from the 31 out to about the 32 where Andy Hemmer and Mike Ruth bring him down. Rick. Ooh, Boston College man hurt on the play. Ricky Moore has carried the ball twice for a total of three yards in this half. Boston College has got nine men, eight and the strong safety up on the line, trying to force Mike Shula to throw the football. That's Andy Hemmer hurt. Hemmer's played a good football game. Number 81, he's been around the football most of the evening. Just a sophomore, had a lot of injuries during his first two years at the college. And he's going to have to come out for a couple of plays, looks like. Well, the Pitt Panthers will be home next Saturday afternoon as they tee it up 3.30 here on ABC against the Oklahoma Sooners. And Pitt had a week off to reorganize or pull themselves back together after being surprised by BYU. But BYU can surprise a lot of people, including Baylor today, 47 to 13. There's Ray Perkins. I'm sure he's wondering what's happened. Second down and 10. They don't give Carruth any yardage on that previous carry. Throw the ball. Shula loops it out for Carruth and missed him. Led him a little too much. He had to get up on his toes in order to deliver the ball over the oncoming lineman. When Sutton came into the ball game for Alabama and the two passes he threw, one was intercepted, the other was fumbled away by Smith. That's when the momentum changed shirts. The score was 31 to 14 when Sutton, the second quarterback, came in and threw an interception. And from then on, it's been all Boston College. Third down, still about 10. Shula has very good protection. Penalty flag is thrown as Carruth makes the catch. He's short of his first down, I do believe. But let's see about that flag. Boston College is signaling holding by one of the Alabama linemen. Let's see. That's what it is. It's a holding call against Alabama. This is the second pos consecutive possession that Alabama's got a penalty on third down after making a nice completion. 
And the Alabama folks just got a lump in their stomach because that means Alabama is going to be back way up. They're going to be looking at third down and a half a mile. And the one thing they don't want to see is number 22 and his chargers on the field. Holding, offense, third down. Alabama's been flagged four times for 45 yards, and Boston College five times for 25. Momentum, Keith, how it affects a college game. A team gets to believing they can do it, and they're virtually unstoppable. Ball is back on the 21. They've got to go to the 41 to get the first down. 20 yards on this play. It's thrown for Richardson. It's just off his fingers as Tony Thurman makes the play. A pair of 17s got together, and the one wearing the white shirt won the struggle. So Alabama must punt. Excellent play by Thurman. The free safety at first responsibility. Play center field. Watch the quarterback. When he points the ball, you break on it. Here's a perfect example. As Thurman comes all the way from the center field, puts his headgear into the shoulder pads of the receiver, Richardson and the ball falls away. First pressure is going to be on Terry Sanders. The second pressure will be on Kelvin Martin. High hanging kick. Fair catch call. Boston College has the football. First down. And they're sitting at their own 45. That was only a 35 yard punt by Terry Sanders. Now the Alabama defense has really got to play. What will they do? Will they defend or will they rush? Mix it up. They have been unsuccessful, really putting much pressure on Flutie in this second half. Very successful the first half. They're going with a four-man rush right now and going to try to defend. Seven defending, four rushing. Here comes the fifth. The pass to Phelan. Gerard Phelan has a first down for Boston College at the Alabama 43. It's just virtually impossible to rush Flutie and leave receivers open because he is going to get the ball to him. As soon as Phelan saw that he was uncovered with the fifth man coming up and rushing, he choked his motor, slowed down, gave a good target to the quarterback. Gerard has caught five for 82 yards. Aaron Flutie, freshman, younger brother of Doug, is in the ball game for the first time at a receiver spot. Ball handed off to Troy Stratford, and Stratford breaks it big down the middle. It's a foot race to the goal line. Touchdown, Boston College, no flag. This may be the greatest turnaround that I have seen in my life now with a team that looked so good the first quarter, first half. That is unbelievable. Unbelievable. Stratford goes 42 yards. He's got 22 carries, 106 yards on the night, and two touchdowns. And at three minutes and 26 seconds to play in the football game, Boston College has taken the lead for the second time. They had the first touchdown of the ball game. Alabama came right back to score. But now, oh boy, it's very quiet on the red side of the field. Here are the shoulders of the quarterback. This ball game is going to rest for Alabama on Mike Shuler's shoulders. Snow's kick is good. So there you have it. A seven-point lead for Boston College. 38 to 31. You don't think Jack Bicknell hasn't worked wonders out on Chestnut Hill? The toughest thing is our, as we go back, the kickoff return, he comes out of the half all fired up, <laughs> yeah, and right. Good goes 99 yards for a touchdown. Here's what happens when you rush the passer, you're concentrating on Flutie. Stratford got 179 yards rushing against Clemson last year because Clemson was trying to rush Flutie most of the time, and Stratford broke clean the receiver's of being chased down the field with the backs and just opens up miles and miles of running room. But this is one of the great turnarounds I have ever witnessed. One player taking charge, getting his team fired up, not letting them quit. Cornelius Bennett now, number 97, was the man that... 
off the shoulder, uh, the, excuse me, the jersey, but couldn't hold it. Stratton made a sensational run. Watch Stratton right here pick up the block. Well, we couldn't see the tail end of it. Snow kicks off. Short kick to Carruth at the 10. And call up Carruth to the outside. Take it out of bounds. He goes out at the 36. So it's duck check time now for Alabama's offense. 318 to play in the ball game, and the line. The lion has roared from the northeast. There's a 38-31 lead for the Boston College Eagles. If you to ask me as we Vince look Sutton at is in. Vince, excuse me, Frank. Vince Sutton is in at quarterback now. You need a fresh man. Mike Sula, as well as he's played, he's hurt and limping. You've got to have somebody with speed and make the big play one way or the other. Here's Sutton. From the 36. Pass is thrown into the Boston College bench. Penalty flag. Holding Alabama, I think. Keith, is one thing that we said early in the show, one, starting a season with an inexperienced quarterback is the biggest concern any football coach can have. It just is the difference in the football game. Let's watch number 68, Ruth, the nose guard. It seems that the Alabama defense, watch number 68, the Alabama blockers are going to tackle him from the back. Number 62 is McIntosh, right there. Now he breaks through. Let's see what McIntosh does. Well, he tackles his leg. That is a 10-yard penalty. Now Sutton has 20 yards to go for a first down. Ball sitting on the Alabama 25. They're trailing by seven. The time remaining is 3-13. Sutton almost caught behind the scrimmage by Ruth. Gets his pass away. Intercepted by Thurman. Boston College picks it off, and Thurman is still traveling. Goes to the Alabama 21-yard line. Second interception of the night by Tony Thurman. Thurman is all over the football field. Just a free safety deluxe, meaning that he plays the center field anticipates where the ball is going to be thrown. Sutton gets outside of containment. He has a receiver open for a touchdown way deep. He didn't see him. He tries to throw the ball across the, the middle. And there, once again, Thurman retreats back inside and nearly scores with the football. When you throw it down the middle, a lot of bad things can happen. Keith, I coached 10 years before I had enough courage to throw the ball down the middle <laughs> on my end of the field. Of course, under these circumstances, you have to. Yep. He had no choice. Of course, I wasn't very conservative. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Traditionally conservative. <laughs> From the 21 now, first down, Boston College, three minutes to play. And Flutie spends the second timeout of the second half. And that's his last one, Keith. That's his last one. This is third. Three minutes to play. Boston College, 38. Alabama, 31. Right now, your body's thirsty for more than water. You're working your body till you can't do more. Gatorade is thirst aid. So give your body what it's thirsty for. Gatorade is thirst aid. For that deep down body thirst. When you exercise, you lose potassium, fluids, minerals. Gatorade helps put them back fast. It's no ordinary thirst quencher. Gatorade is thirst aid. For that deep down body thirst. You've seen it on television, now see it in person. Vector, Goodyear's all-new, all-season radio. Opening last week against Western Carolina, 44-24. And come south for the first time to play at Legion Field against Alabama. And lo and behold, look what they're trying to do. And may be very close to doing as Flutie rolls it out. Looks into the end zone, and the pass is slapped away. Gieselman fighting for it on the rebound and can't come down with it. I'm surprised that they, no, I shouldn't be surprised that they're throwing under these circumstances when they could move the ball in and set it up for a field goal if they don't score. They, but Flutie is so good at throwing the ball. Watch Gieselman. He gets hit. He's right over the middle. You know what? I'm not sure that Gieselman was the intended receiver. I think Flutie saw Brendan Murphy in the end zone with a one-on-one -on -one cover, man coverage back there. 
And he just didn't get the pass high enough as some Alabama player jumped up and knocked it down. But it was Murphy in the end zone that had man coverage. Yeah. Right. Second down and ten. Run it. Stratford. Troy. Hit. He fumbled. Fumbled the football as he was hit in the back. And he's got it. Alabama's got it. Oh, my. It hasn't definitely signaled yet, Keith. Well, a lot somebody of in a striped shirt did. Well, the other one has overruled. The referee has overruled the other official. And he has that right. He had blown the whistle. Boston College retains possession. Let's see if we can judge and define, as Keith said, what happened. Here's Stratford. Has the ball stripped. Waving it a little bit high. Should be protecting it. Ball comes out right there. That's a fumble anywhere you look at it. He's... Well, you can't tell, but I... Is any part of his body other than his hand or his feet? Well, he's not down, ground? Frank. No, no. Well, let's see who got the ball. Alabama said they reacted as though they had it. The ball came out. It's laying over on the right. And then you can't see it. Let's, let's look from this angle where we, we uh, saw the first time. It, it appears that uh, now you can see the Stratford is waving the ball as he leaped over the defensive lineman. Now the ball comes out right there. Goes right to the number 78, I guess it is, or number 90. Godwin gets the football, but uh, somebody had called him down. One official. He may have fallen down on the ball. Now, let's see. You see the officials, let it go a little farther, and I think you're going to see one man signal uh, the other way. And Alabama is, is selling the idea they've got the ball. Now the referee over here is saying second down, so he's called it. See the referee on the left? He's yeah, but already he can't see it. He's already signaling third down, though. <laughs> well, whatever. Boston College keeps Isn't it. Isn't that what he's doing? We have examined it as thoroughly as we can. <laughs> it's down on the 18-yard line, where it is third down and seven for Boston College. And two minutes and 23 seconds to play in the football game. Alabama has three timeouts left. Boston College, none. Let's listen to Bobby Ayer. Yeah, I couldn't hear it. Third and seven for BC. Leading by seven. That's Jim Brown caught that big touchdown pass taking it inside the 15 to about the 13 where John Hand brings him down Boston College will play North Carolina on the 22nd of September or their road schedule is something Alabama takes the time to let uh, snow think about this a little bit slam the door right here and make it a 10-point lead for BC a lot of leg Missed it. That's his first miss. And it came with two minutes and 15 seconds to play in the football game. And Alabama will get the ball back now, trailing by just seven. Whoa, has this thing sawed back and forth? Well, it's, the game has only lasted three hours and 15 minutes. <laughs> From the 20, Alabama goes to work with Vince Sutton in at quarterback. A freshman whips a pass to Smith. Smith spins away, and now he's pinned. Herrera wouldn't let him get away and pinned him right down at the 25. Pick up of five, two minutes now. Keith, that was excellent pass coverage, conceding the short pass, preventing the receiver from getting out of bounds. Pass to the sidelines again. Paul out to Ruth, diving, trying for the first down, and gets it up at the 34. Ruth. Should have gone to the sidelines, yes, but he, he couldn't get there. 
He could have when he caught the ball, Keith. He turned back inside trying to go all the way. College football, though, the clock does stop while the chains are moved, and Alabama is going right now without a huddle. 38-31, Boston College. This Sutton, the quarterback, this is his first game right out of high school. Only been practicing three weeks from LaGrange, Georgia, number 10. Very talented young man. One of the most highly recruited quarterbacks he's ever had in the South. Scott Harrington made that tackle for Boston College. Pick up a five, second down and five, minute and 20. Ball is on the 38. Sutton's pass down the middle, incomplete, intended for Greg Richardson. Third down and five. Coming up. As we look at Ray Perkins, well, what in the world has happened? We were going so effectively, so efficiently running the ball. 31 to 14 leading. He put in his substitute, young freshman quarterback who he has great confidence in, trying to break him into the ball game, knowing he's going to need both quarterbacks during the season. Wasn't a bad call at that time, nope. except for Doug Flutie. Against a normal football team, that's a no good good strategy. Tony Thurman's interception. And that turned the game around. Third down and five from the 38. Sutton throws it away. And Richardson dives and made the catch at the 45. And that'll be a first down. Was, Ruth was all over Vince Sutton, just clobbering him, and Sutton still got it away. You can see how strong Sutton is. He weighs close to 200 pounds. You can see him back up. Ruth weighs 250 pounds. And you can see Sutton still release the ball, going backwards for the completed pass and first down. At the 45 and a minute and 10 to play. Seven point difference in the ball game. 38-31. Goes deep with it. Overthrows everybody. Richardson was the only man he had deep. Boy, he drilled that ball about 60 yards, Keith, without, without much effort. He does have a strong arm. Sutton in high school threw, attempted 350 passes and had only four intercepted. One out of every 87. He's had two intercepted here tonight. A little different game. A little different game. A little different rush. 104. Time remaining. Second down and 10. Little shovel pass inside to Ricky Moore. Moore, the fullback, gets out of bounds. Stops the clock. First down, Alabama. Boston College, 28 50. Three seconds to play. What a super play. Most of the Boston College defense lose the ball. A little shovel pass, trap out on the defensive end, and Ricky Moore is hard to get down. Watch what a great runner he is. Boom, run through that one. Boom, second man missed it. Finally, now get out of bounds, Ricky. Get out of bounds right over there and stop the clock. Well, if you're going to second guess, I would wonder where he's been in the second half. Yes. First down and 10, Sutton turns around, swings it out to Carruth. He wants to throw a pass, does into the end zone. Intercepted by Tony Thurman. And a 15-yard penalty uh, for spiking the ball, but I don't blame him. What a play by Thurman. He's intercepted three passes tonight. And all of sensational plays, not just the typical interception where the ball is thrown to the defensive back. He covers about 25 yards while the ball is in the air and the receiver's open for a touchdown. Did you think, Keith? Yep. If it had been a perfect, if Thurman hadn't been able to make the play, it would have been a touchdown. Here it is, a good play. Fake sweep, lateral. You can, woo, that's not a lateral. That's, that's a, a forward. Lateral. You can only have one forward in college football, one forward pass. Goodness gracious alive. What a great play anyway. That would have been a controversy if that play had been allowed to stay in. <laughs> Goodness gracious <laughs> But look at Thurman, number 17. Yeah. Two interceptions last yeah. week, three tonight, 17 career interceptions, free safety deluxe. Now the penalized for the emotions of spiking the ball. Here's the pattern. You can see Smith, I see if Smith's not open. He, he's in behind number 28, Munn. 
And look how far in behind he is. And Thurman comes all the way from the free safety position. And the officials definitely didn't catch the other. Nope. There were two forward passes on the play. No question about it. Alabama has two timeouts, 45 seconds. They will expend both of them. I don't know whether they can force the kick or not. Be close. And they would give a safety, I'm sure, before they would kick the ball. That's what you can expect. If Alabama can force them to, to um, kick the ball, they'll just give them a safety. I'm not going to miss it this time. <laughs> Mark that down. <laughs> Boy, they've gotten in the Georgia game. Same kind of action, and Alabama immediately jumps to the timeout. So that'll bring up a third down now. The ball is back, uh, what, about the six-yard line now. No, mar mark it on the five, and they've got to come all the way out to the 30 if they try for a first down, but I don't think they will. I think I agree oh, with no. you. If necessary, they'll just run it right on through there and give them the two. Give them the two and line up and kick the ball free from the 20-yard line. Other scores on the day. Michigan beating Miami. Miami's first loss of the season, 14. Once again, Flutie sits down with the ball, and that gets the clock rolling, and Alabama now has no timeouts remaining. Boston College has got to snap it one more time. And Keith, they're going to give them a safety. <laughs> I'm not going to get caught. Well, let's see if they... They, they don't have to. No, they don't have to. Nope, they don't have to. I think they do have to snap it one more time. No, they don't. They had 25 seconds when the official called it ready for play. Is that right? Yeah, they had 23 seconds on the clock when he announced it ready for play so they can just... Well, then the let's say it. The Boston College Eagles have defeated the Crimson Tide of Alabama by a score of 38 to 31, and it's one of the great victories in the history of football at Boston College. The Eagles of B.C. come south. And they go home with a treasure, 38 to 31. They're 2 and 0 on the season. Alabama had led 31 to 14 in the second half, and now it is an exuberant Boston College team and coaching staff. And let's join Tim Brent. All right, Keith, standing here with Jack McNell, we're watching the team celebrate. We talked at halftime. You said it was frustrating in the locker room. You reminded them of the Penn State game, the Clemson game. One of the greatest comebacks of all time. Well, it was good because when they took that opening kickoff and came down, now our guys could have gone belly up, and they didn't. They just kept playing and kept playing. I couldn't be more proud of a group of kids. It was just great. See, I thought you were going to blame that on me because I held you too long. No, no, no <laughs> problem at all. It was, it was just a great win by our kids. I'm really happy for them. Tell me what else you told the kids during during the timeout after that touchdown, after the, the kickoff was run back. I just told them we weren't making plays. Everything was there. We knew what we wanted to do, but nobody was making a play. I told them to relax and have some fun and get after it. And we started to do it. Course number 22, he throws them this way, that way. That son of a gun's a good one. He's a winner. All right, here comes number 22 right now, Coach. Come on over here, Doug. The hero of the ball game, Doug Flutie. And the emotions are sore. Tremendous comeback. Was there any any doubt in your mind as you were coming down the last quarter? Not. There was no doubt that we could do it. We just had to stop making mistakes. And we finally settled down late in the ball game and got it together. Pulled it off. What was the mood of the team in the locker room at halftime? We felt lucky to be only down by ten. We felt first half we played awful. I mean, we didn't even show up in the first half, and we were only down by ten points. So we were kind of happy. We were frustrated at some of the mistakes, and we knew we could put some points on the board. But, Doug, it had to get worse. They came back and ran the kickoff back. <laughs> that was a downer. Huh? But the team held together. You got to hold your composure and just keep fighting. See what happened. There was plenty of time. 30 minutes is a long time. Best comeback you've ever been associated with? Yes, definitely. And the most enjoyable. Great game. Thank you. Okay, Bye, I see Tony Thurman over here. Tony, come on over here. Tony made the key interception down the, down the end. Tony, you, you were beaten on the play. You made a great comeback. Well, he got, I thought of read it late. I thought he was just going to try to get a few yards and run out of bounds. But I saw the other guy kept running, so I just broke a little bit deeper. And I had to make a leap, and leap for it, and, you know, I came up with it. Okay, congratulations, Thank Tony you. Thurman. All right, back up to you, Keith. All right, Timmy, and your final score, a win for Boston College by seven. Keith Jackson, Frank Royals, and Tim Brandt in Birmingham, our executive producer of ABC Sports is Rune Arley.